All right, so we give praise and steam and honor to the most high you who are named Yahweh Shah Hamashiach out this day. It picked us up in John chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and there they will testify me. You will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the law of Allah in you. I come in my Abba's name, and you receive me not. But another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe but receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that come from Allah in own? Let's take a look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 again. What y'all took from what we looked at as we saw in the last couple of days? What y'all took from that? Right, right, right. No, also the thing I'm talking about, and I know I mentioned that to y'all. Shalom, man. That many y'all last night. Y'all know how strong a statement that was for David to look Saul in the face and tell him we can just proceed from the wicked. That's a strong statement. But that's all because that he didn't understand the depth, the depth, the breadth, the length, and the height. You know, we talked about depth last night. Tonight, we, this afternoon, we're going to talk about height. We might sprinkle a little breath in there with it because they kind of interconnect. But I'm going to try to focus more on height and breadth. And we also going to talk about them cherubims. I remember them cherubims. Who know what a cherubim is? They hang over the mercy seat. But we're going to go into a little bit more detail because they, they're mentioned in, the, in about three, four different places with about three, four different vocations. You understand? So, I thought they surround All right. But I, that's one thing. That's, that has been uh, enumerated. But they also are mentioned in doing a couple of other things. You know what I'm saying? That's why we hear. That's why we sit down and take the time to go through those things. Ain't that right? That's why we do that. Because, of course, you know, they're over the mercy seat, but they also have other roles. They also have other roles. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees under the Abba of our Lord, Yahushua HaMashiach, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his esteem, to be strengthened with might by his Ruach in the inner man, that Mashiach might dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of Mashiach, which pass all knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of Elohim. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that work in us, unto him be esteemed in the house by Mashiach Yahusha throughout all ages, the world without end. Amen. So, this is what I want y'all to do. I want you to come over here to Ezekiel chapter 40. I want Ezekiel 41 instead. Ezekiel chapter 41. Ezekiel 41 and 1. He said, afterwards he brought me to the temple and measured the post. Six cubits broad on the one side, six cubits broad on the other side, which is the breadth of the tabernacle. So pause. Now we're going to look at breadth. We're going to grab breadth and we're going to look at that right now. Matter of fact, let, let's discuss this word for uh, for temple real quick. Like you got Hakal, right? This is the temple of Elohim. You got Hay, you got Yod, you got Ka, and you got Lamar. And you can go ahead. Hay, Yod, Ka, Lamar. Hey, two little children on that carpet. Don't play. Sit up straight. Pay attention. We good? Yes, sir. I was talking to him about this here the other day, and he didn't believe this here that we had this conversation. Do y'all recall that we didn't have a conversation that you should not be emotionally attached to anybody in the flesh? He feels like that's a difficult thing to ascertain. Can any of y'all share y'all thoughts why you came to the conclusion that you should not be emotionally attached to anything in the flesh? It's not. 
And you know why you shouldn't be the reason why is because you know when you're emotionally attached to something and it's removed, it will lead to a mental breakdown. But it's not this. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter who it is. You cannot be emotionally attached to anything that is number one. You shouldn't be emotionally period, especially as a man. That should even happen, period. You know what I'm talking about? Because, see, the reason why I said because if you're emotionally attached to something, that means emotions change. It's no different than the weather. It changes. So if something happens to that which you are you change with on a day-to-day -day basis that you're attached to, you remove what you're attached to, it will cripple you. Can't have that happen. You know what I'm saying? You are only supposed to be a slow. You're only supposed to be attached to Allahim. You love those that you love in the flesh, but you cannot be attached to them because they are temporary. Why do you think so many people go into great states of depression and mental uh, decline when people who they are emotionally attached to pass away? Bro, everybody's going to die. You know what I'm saying? And you don't know when you're going to die. So you cannot be attached to your children. You can't be attached to your parents. You can't be attached to your siblings. You have to enjoy the time that you have with them when they're there. Because one day you're going to get up and they're not going to be there anymore. You cannot be emotionally attached to your children. You love your children. You know why? Because they're not yours. That's what you're not understanding. They're not yours. They're yours. He said, all souls are mine. Your children don't belong to you. What did Job say when, when his kids died? What was his response? And he, you who will give and you who will take away. See, that's a scriptural example of how you are not supposed to be emotionally attached. Matter of fact, let's come over here and look at it. Why y'all thinking on that? Hey, because I'm talking about this because you got to understand the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height of the man's tabernacle. He would have not have said that. He would have turned his back. How many people you know that are emotionally attached to somebody, they die and they get mad at all of you? Now, you don't have to mention him. You can just say, I know. You don't have to go into detail. We don't know that man and nobody on here need to know his business. I can dig it. I can dig it. Come over here to Job chapter one, I believe. Might be chapter two. Hold on. Once we read that, then I'm going to say it out loud again. Hey, hey. Too much noise. Too much noise. Hey, fix your face. Go sit down like she asked you to. You can go in the back and go to sleep. Then fix your face and go sit down. Come over here to Job chapter one. Pick this up about verse 17. One to 17. I think what I, uh, the main thing I'm talking about, I think it's in chapter two. He said, why, I'm sorry. He said, while he was just speaking, there came also another and said, the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon your camels and carried them away and slain your servants with the edge of the sword. I only am escaped alone to tell you. And while he was just speaking, there came also another and said, your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smoked the four corners of the house. And it, let, and it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell you. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return. Yahuwah gave and Yahuwah take away. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah. In all this Job said not, nor charged Elohim foolishly. Now look at this here. His sons and daughters died, bro. And all that man went and did was mourn and gave thanks to Yahuwah. Because that's all you can do. You cannot be emotionally attached to anyone because everyone in this room is going to die one day. That's not a that's not an if. That's not a speculation. That is the guaranteed actual fact. You are going to go to the grave. Your children are going to go to the grave. You know how many people who've been mentally crippled? They were emotionally attached to their kids. 
Bro, who told you your kids was going to live to get grown? Who told you that? No one told you that. Who told you you said your parents wouldn't bury you? Nobody's ever told you that. You who has never told anybody that? So when you serve you, who and you understand that, and you understand that whoever he allows to be in your life, you regard them and you honor them while you have your time with them. That's it. You love them. You don't because being in love it leads to, if that's emotional attachment, it's not healthy. It's not going to be helpful because if you take it away, you end up doing that, and that ends up being that what you were emotionally attached to was actually your God. That's what ends up happening. Doesn't matter if it's your kids, bro. Your kids don't belong to you. If your kid, your kids come from Yahuwah, so Yahuwah can take them back when he feel like. That's why Job. Now look at here what Job said over here, right? In chapter two, verse nine. So you can't who said anything about see you getting it you get the that's no mourning is not emotional attachment that's not emotional attachment who said because you don't emotionally attach that you're not sorry nobody said that what you're not understanding is you can have sorrow and not be emotionally attached because we just seen Joe born for his kids didn't he but in all of that, he didn't blame Yahuwah for what happened. He still honored Yahuwah. See, look here, right? You, you just mentioned an individual. Niggas who are emotionally attached, as soon as somebody died, why God ain't do this? Why God ain't do that? Sin. Because who told you that your child was guaranteed to live? Who told you you was going to live? Who told you your parents was going to live? Who told you that? He never told you that. He never told you that. See, you know why you get it twisted? You're emotionally attached because you're not dealing with the reality that people are going to pass away one day. So what you're doing is you're not cherishing the time that you have with those that you love. That's what that's where it comes down to. You cherish the time that you have with those that you love. You don't take them for granted because you can leave here at any moment at any time. And no matter who passes away, let Yahuwah's name be esteemed because Yahuwah is righteous in all his name. You know what I'm saying? And that's 100% facts from heaven. Job chapter 2, verse 9, right? Look what he said, right? He said, but then, then his wife said unto him, do you still retain your integrity? Curse Elohim and die. But he said unto her, you speak as one of the foolish women speak. What? Shall receive good at the hand of Elohim? And shall we not receive evil? And all this... Did not Job sin with his lips? See, you can't look at you who are blessing you, and then your people die, and now you sitting back, you mad with him. That's not how that works. This is spiritual understanding. That man say everything in this earth is temporal, and we're looking for a kingdom that is eternal. That's it. Because at the end of the day, we ain't supposed to be sorrowing like people in the world who ain't got no hope. We have an earnest expectation of resurrection. I can't do nothing about somebody who don't. But guess what, bro? When David's son died, what did he do? When Absalom died, what did David do? When Saul died, what did David do? People mourn when people pass away, bro. That's a part of life. You're sad. They're gone. You're not going to see them again. But that doesn't cripple you. David's son died, and he went up, and he went and got himself son to eat and wash himself up. And his point was, he done left for me. He said, I can go to him, but he can't come to me. Wept over last that is, that's not emotional attachment. Emotional attachment is when something is taken away and it causes you to be mentally incapacitated. Because you were attached to that and now there's a void and you're going to seek to try to fill that void with something other than your God. So, can't do it. Can't do it. What you have for that sentence again? Uh, worship is crazy in the light of the so you can stop. Now he's looking at it for the temple like this here, right? To worship the greatness of the shepherd in light or in life. Because remember, in him was the light, and the light was the life of men. And that's what you would be doing in that temple, would we not? Let's look and see in Revelation chapter 21 if we would. Because I just want to keep that in mind. I get it. I understand your consternation. Because you ain't never heard, you ain't never had nobody tell you not to be emotionally attached to anyone in the flesh, but you can't do it. You can't do it. And there's no exception. You can't do it. You can't do it. Can't yeah, you, you, you just can't do it. 
Not to serve you who and do it. You can do it. You can't serve you who and do it because it'll it'll cause you to walk away from you. If it, like I say, if it don't cripple you mentally, Revelation twenty one and twenty two. And I saw no temple therein for you who are Elohim Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need for the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the esteem of Elohim did light it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Now see, his sin was the perfect state because now you are able to what? worship the greatness because who is great? And he, he great. And you get to worship him in that light of the shepherd. That's what you need to do. Why you in that temple? That's what you're going to do. Let's come back with Ezekiel 41. Cut it out, James Bird. Now let's look at this other thing. I want you to look at post because I want us to get a good visual of what it's talking about this here, right? So now you have post and that's the door jam. Or the pillars. Now, let me ask y'all this here, right? Who knows? Who knows the names of the two pillars in the temple? Because you know they use them in Masonic temples. That's why stupid niggas be trying to say Solomon was a Mason. Man, what no Mason? Who knows the name of those two pillars in the temple? Boaz and Joe Chin. So let's go on around here and look at it so y'all can find out where it's at. So you can see it in the text. Come over here to First Kings if you would. Well, man, yeah, First Kings chapter seven. First Kings chapter seven. Pick it up at verse fourteen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Liddell. Come on back over here, Liddell. You too, little Malik. Seven and 14. Sure. He, okay, make it 13. And, and King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram of Tyre. He was a widow son of the tribe of Naphtali. That's why you see them say about Masons. If you study Masonry, they'll sit back and say, are you a widow son? Because they referring to hire. You know what I'm saying? See, what they try to do is they try to take certain stuff out of the text, mix it in with what they got going on. But that's another conversation for another day. And his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. He was filled with wisdom, understanding, and cunning to work, to work all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. For he cast two pillars of brass, 18 cubits high piece, a line of 12 cubits. Did he compass either of them? He made two chapters of molten brass to set upon the tops of the pillars. The height of one chapter was five cubits. The height of the other chapter was five cubits. Now, I'm going to tell y'all what a chapter is. That word is, uh, excuse me, Kotharet. That is the capital crown or the top of the pillar. You got Kaf, you got Tau, you got Rosh, and you got Tau again. So you can sit back and see how you uh, that the highest or that how Yahusha was subdued by the covenant to bring in the covenant. Now, how was Yahusha subdued by a covenant to bring in the covenant? <laughs> word, word, word. And, and this is go back to something we were talking about last night, right? Remember what we were looking at last night? in regards to how the sign of Emmanuel was done twice because you got the first covenant of life that was broken because indeed Sharon, because of because of Adam's sin so then he come in the in the form of an old covenant to break a, 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 and bring a new covenant because he's the capital, capital or cock of that pillar you know what I'm saying I think this is in Ephesians let me tell you Oh, I know what it is. First Timothy chapter three. I believe. First Timothy chapter. Three. There we go. First Timothy chapter three. I'm gonna have to pick it up in verse twelve because it kind of run together. So, but verse 12 ain't really what we, we, we looking for, but nevertheless, 
He said, let the, let the servants or the ministers be husbands of one wife, ruling their sons and their houses, own houses well. For they that have used the office of a minister, well purchased themselves to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith, which is in Mashiach Yahusha. These things right under you, hoping to come under you shortly. But if I tarry long, that you may know how, how that you may know how you ought to behave yourself in the house of Allahim. Now, remember this here, right? Yahusha told you that he is the house of the living Allahim in regards to his what? His body, correct? So if you look at his body is the house and you dwell in him and he dwells in you, then you will know you should know how to behave yourself in the house of Allahim or why you dwell in the Mashiach. Because look at what it said, which is the house of the living Allahim, the pillar and ground of the truth. Now, what does a pillar do for a structure? It holds it up. Now, in the epistle of Jude, does anybody know, know what he said Mashiach is able to keep you from doing? Falling. And what does a pillar do for a building? It support it or it keep it from falling. So if a pillar supports a building, what Hebrew word would be akin to that pillar? When you spell it out, it would tell you that it, it means a strong support. A bro or a brother. So a pillar would be akin spiritually when you look at it in regards to a man as because who is the house? The house is the people. You know what I'm saying? He's the pillar. So he's the one who holds up the people. So he would be a strong defense and support to the people. That's why he say he that sanctified and he that sanctified are all or one who which calls. He's not ashamed to call them brethren. So what does that tell you about the house? That Mashiach supports the house. And if Mashiach supports the house and those of the house ought to support each other. You know what I'm saying? See, it's not just looking at the framework of how the house is built. The framework of how the house is built is to show how the framework of how the people are supposed to be interconnected and built towards one another. See, we say this to every time somebody gets baptized. If somebody been immersed in the family of Allahim, then you ought to treat them as if they're your family. Don't treat them like a nigga in the street. You know what I'm saying? It, it don't. See, you know, a lot of people, you, we come from families and they be dysfunctional. People don't forgive each other. People get upset with each other. People don't fool with each other. See, who is not on that? He's not on that. He doesn't want that to happen in that fashion. That's why, what did we read last night? He said, if your brother trespass against you, and he repent. What did Yahushua told you to do? And what did we see David do with Saul when Saul repented? And did he treat him any different after he repented? He still kept his righteousness and his wisdom intact. Because see, I'm not going to change my righteousness and wisdom and then cause you to have an all to speak against my God because I'm not conducting myself like I'm supposed to because I'm upset with you. And like I told you last night, ain't none of y'all had nobody try to kill you. Ain't nobody trying to kill you. Ain't none of y'all can even fathom the fact that you have the ability to be able to forgive a man who tried to kill you. And still he'll treat him with the honor and respect that his vocation calls for. You know what I'm saying? See, that's when you understand in the depth. But see, we talk, I mean, but we talk about height and data and a little bit of the breadth. Because breath is the width or the expanse or the room. You understand? But let's keep on rolling up. He said, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Allahim was manifested in the flesh, justified in the Ruach, seen of Malachim, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into esteem. So look at the key thing of what got him received up in the esteem. Number one, it said Allahim was what? Manifested in the flesh. That takes us back to what we were talking about with Emmanuel. Because what did Yahushua tell them people after he resurrected from the dead when they seen him and they were scared? What did he tell them? When his apostles seen him in the 24th chapter of Luke and they were affrighted, what did he tell them? So Elohim was better than the flesh, whether for coming out of the womb or coming out of the womb. You understand what I'm saying? If you have understanding, whether he came out of Mary or whether he came out that grave, he was manifested in the flesh. Then he turned around and tell you how he was justified in the Ruach. So how was he justified in the Ruach? Who can tell me how Yahushua was justified in the Ruach? And if you can't, if you don't know, what kind of people I'm going to say that um, he was on the state. 
Anybody else? Anybody else? How was he justified in the Ruach? Who can answer that for me on this stream? What y'all answer is? Him being innocent and having integrity. Anybody else? Well, oh, you standing up when you all right? Huh? You back? And then this? Okay. Okay. And he resurrected from the dead. And you know, all y'all done put them all in together, but it's encapsulated than what the husky man that told you. Faith. And you know why I say? John chapter 17. It ain't like I ain't called you that all day yesterday. <laughs> okay, but you thought that was a joke. That was a regular nondescript adjective. <laughs> John chapter 17, the first one. I don't know such thing. These words make Yahushua lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Abba, the hours come, esteem your son, that your son also may esteem you. Has he given him power over all flesh? that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal, that they may know you, the only true Elohim, Yahushua HaMashiach, whom you have sent. I have esteemed you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have made me to do. And now I will esteem you, me, with your own self, with the esteem which I had with you before the world was. Now, this is the point of the statement, right? Isaiah chapter 53 and 11 tells you that the knowledge of my righteous servant will justify me. Now, of course, we know in Acts chapter 2 that Psalms, Psalm 16 was quoted and saying that my flesh shall rest in hope because I know that you will not suffer your set apart one to see corruption. So how was he justified in the Ruach? Because he was justified by his faith because he said, my father gave me a commandment, what I should do and what I should say. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. That's the justification, which you also said in Resurrection of the Dead. You mentioned that. Before. You did and, and that go along with it, but it also go along with what he mentioned for what he just said right here, because he said him being perfect because he finished the work. He was a perfect sacrifice without spot, wrinkle, and blemish. And what you mean? And then, of course, that's the, the actual finishing of the work, because now he gave up the ghost. See, we were talking about this this morning. When you look at Shabbat, it said Yahuwah seeks from his works, and what did he say when he was finished? He said, it is finished. When Yahushua was on the stake and he gave up the ghost before he gave it up, what did he say? It is finished. Now it's time for me to cease and desist from my work. Now I can be justified by the faith that I had in my father by getting on the stake and perishing because I was a perfect sacrifice. Therefore, because I believe, because I know I'll be resurrected, because he said, I lay my life down, no, no man take it from me. I lay it down of myself and my father give me power that I might pick it up again. And this is what you understand how he is the pillar or the top or the chapter to be able to support and hold it or the crown or the head of the house, if you would. It was one more thing in Timothy. I wanted to make sure I got that for you. Huh? Mm. Then he say he was believed on in the world. So, of course, that's easy. Because he manifested and preached the gospel and his apostles preached the gospel. But let me ask you this here. How was he seen of angels? Because he said he was seen of angels. So you're going to need specifics. This should be easy for you to. <laughs> you got the one Malachi that ministered to him in regards to when he was weak before he perished. You got about two more instances in the gospel where he was seen of angels. Angels came and ministered to him then. You still got about two, three more. When he was transliterated. When he was transforming with Malachi came up there with him too. He got immersed there with Malachi there. 
When he was born, Malachi was there. When he came out of the tomb, Malachi was there. Because wouldn't the Malachi seen him if they rolled the tomb, rolled the stone back? Any examples of it where he was seen in Malachi on this plane of existence? You know what I'm saying? Pretty much right there. Like admitted, they ministered to him when he was in the wilderness after his fast. They ministered to him when he was after he prayed before he got before he got uh, crucified. They ministered to him by moving that dog on stone off that uh, off that rock. And Malachi was up there when he transfigured. You know, it's all there. Now here's the last one received up into esteem. That's easy, and that's why we talking about that height. Come on back there. Uh, what we at? First Kings chapter. Oh, and he ascended in Acts into the heavens. That the Malachi by suit. Malachi was there talking to the apostles. They were telling him what you standing here looking up for. Yeah. Same way you seen him go up in there. Mm -hmm. Same way he going back. He coming back. See, a lot of people don't believe that because they ain't seen him go up. So they don't believe he coming back. But that's not they, that's not our problem. You understand? That's not our problem. We're in verse 17 of 1 Kings chapter 7. And the nets of checker work. Now let's look at nets of checker work. <laughs> now, when you look at checker, it is uh savaka. And this is an ornament that they put on the pillars. So it's a garment that they put on the pillar. Now the characters here are Sean. Bot, Ka, and hey, go ahead with it. This is an ornament. This is basically like akin to a garment that they put on the pillar. Now, that should be interesting for you right now, could it not? They said they put check and work on the pillar. Ka. You got Sean, Ka, Ka, and hey. Sean, Ba, Ka, and hey. We don't go say we know ain't no little, there ain't no consumption going on. So you got to be joined to something. Okay. No, you got to subdue Paul to be filled. See, when you turn around, when you took about taking a net and putting it on that pillar, somebody being filled with something. Because what is this garment putting on this pillar? That's again to the Ruach because that's a You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. See, and hey, you know, hey, right? One of the meanings for hey is breath, is it not? Oh, 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 you look at this here, right? Not even necessarily being paired to the house because we're looking at this pillar, right? The pillar we've ascertained that pillar is Mashiach. That pillar has a garment on it, that garment is akin to the Ruach. So we know when we put this garment on, we ain't actually put on a Ruach per se, but you feel with it. So now you feel with the breath to be paired with the sun. That's the only way you can get in there. I thought the breath would be So now you feel with the breath or you feel with the spirit to be paired to the sun or to be paired to the house. You feel with it now. See, hold on. I'm thinking about something that was in my head. I got to give it a second. I just, it just fell out my breath. Okay, Philippians chapter 3. I told you we're gonna we're gonna be real, real. Uh particular dealing with this here, so it might take a while. Make this Philippians 3 and 14. I press towards the mark of the pie of the, for the prize of the high calling of Elohim Mashiach Yahusha. Let us therefore, as many be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything you be of otherwise minded, Elohim shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, we we have already attained. Let us walk in the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Now look what he tell you. Everybody should be doing the same thing. Because look what he tell you, brethren. He follows together of me and mark them which walk so. As, as you have us for an example. Now he's telling you, when he's telling you to mark somebody, he's saying if it's anybody out of pocket, go ahead and point them out. Go ahead and point them out. 
No, he already tell you that to, to do what with, uh, with the unruly. See, I didn't see y'all know this because I done told you this. You know, a lot of people feel like you shouldn't do people like that. Well, that's not how that book roll. Book say, hey, that nigga over there, gay. Point him not telling calling him a homosexual. That nigga there around here sleeping fornicating, sleeping with his mom, with his father's wife. Put him on blast for it. Don't sweep it up under the rug. If you got knowledge that that's what that nigga doing. You know what I'm saying? See, that's a new thing because we live in a culture and a society that, that does not care for accountability for one's actions. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff that nigga be talking about, correct your lady and, and, and uh, support in public and rebuke in private, you better not because if you let her get away with filing in public by the time you get into the house, man, she trying to hear what you're talking about. She's going to be like, that whole nigga let me slide with that. That nigga supposed to elbow me off the top rope. So she ain't respecting nothing you're talking about. It ain't no different with the term. Guarantee if you take them niggas out in public, they act like a fool. You say, I'm going to correct you back at the house. You'll never get him under control. Because all he going to know is, I acted a fool in this in this store. I acted a fool at this location. And they didn't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? So in their mind, what is that telling them? I have a license. That's a, safe haven. That's a safe haven. So when you come back to the house, you know you did wrong in that store. They like, is this nigga serious? This nigga can't be serious. That moment been passed. That was three hours ago. You know what I'm saying? They don't have no respect for that. That ain't no difference. You think you now, now you who might come back around and bust your head up later. But if he don't get you right in there on the spot and hit you on the back end, the back end gonna be way worse. You wish he would have went ahead and corrected you right there in front of everybody. How you gonna sit back and say you can't be in front uh, corrected in front of everybody when Machiav was put in front of a to an open chain before all? When he put to an open reproach before all, we don't have a right to say nobody can't put you on blast before all. Not if he, not if he did it, and he ain't do nothing wrong. Let's continue. For as many walk of whom I've told you often, now tell you even weeping, they are enemies of the snake of Mashiach, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose esteem is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conduct is in heaven. Whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Yahushua HaMashiach, who shall change our vile body that it might be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So you looking to get covered with that same check of work that he's covered with because he's in the house. So that check of work on that pillar is symbolic of being covered with that Ruach. Let's come on back to 1 Kings chapter 7. Matter of fact, I'm trying to think of something in, in regards to and go to Psalms 45. Matter of fact, make it Proverbs chapter one. Proverbs chapter one and verse verse uh, verse seven. A lot of things that word that word be tough. It hits you dead in your chest. But you know, Yahuwah's way is perfect. It's not the way that people like to to push out their tools. He said, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. What would that word instruction should say? Do you know what that word for instruction should actually say? Because it, it's not the word to teach nobody. That's not what's there. Y'all should know what it say. Every time you see instruction, what is that word that's, that's actually there? It's correction. Yeah, it's Musar. It's the word for discipline and chastity. Here. Proverbs 1 and 7. Every time you see, I, I can say, but about 99.9% .9 of the time, when you see instruction in the text, it's going to say Musar. And that's the Hebrew word for chastening, for reproof, for discipline, and correction. So you say fools despise, because when you discipline somebody, what are you doing? Correct. You instructing them. Because you're instructing them on what you ought not to do. How can you know what not to do if nobody corrects you? You're going to keep doing it. You know what I'm saying? You can't stop doing something and nobody tells you stop. 
But no, well, of course, that's trial and error. Like your people have told you, don't put your hand on the stove, it's hot. But you didn't learn till you got disciplined by that stove and you stuck your hand on it. You found out why they kept telling you not to do that. You had to learn the hard way because you didn't want to listen. <laughs> He said, my son, hear the instruction of a father. Forsake not the law of your mother. There shall be an ornament of grace unto your head and chains about your neck. So look what he told you, right? That discipline and instruction is an ornament of favor on your head. That means that word in your mind and in your thoughts. Come on back over here to First uh, Kings chapter 7. In verse what, 17. Now you also got reeds of chain work for chapters, which were upon the top of the pillars, seven for the one chapter, seven for the other. Now, when you got reeds, you got these are festoons or twisted threads or tassels. But they are a fringe that was placed upon these chapters on the top of the pillar. You got Gamal, Dalit, and Lamar. It's Goodell. You can go ahead with it. Gamal, Dalit, and Lamar. This is for uh, reeds. These were tassels that were placed on the chapter or the top of the pillar. No, sir. Reads, or it, it, but it translates to a tassel or a festoon. Something that's hung from the network. The networks that they put on the chapters, there were tassels or, or threads that hung from those uh, networks. So basically, to put a visual in, uh, uh, into it, basically, fringes at the bottom of a garment. And Lamar. The direct definition for this is twisted threads, tassels, festoons. But that's tassels on clothes, festoons on the capital of a column. Lamar, Dalit, and Lamar. And this same word is the word that's used for fringe in that Deuteronomy 22. But on the top of the, it's a festoon or so. I can look it up and show you what a festoon is. It's like a chain or a call of the fowl or leaves or ribbons hung as decoration. Yeah. Now you know one of the definitions for call is what? That or lift up. You lifting up the sacrifice of the shepherd. Because when Yahushua got crucified, what did they put on him? When they took him out there, they went there and they put they put some festoons on his head too. They took the crown of thorn, put it right on his head. Put it right on the top of that pillar mm -hmm. to sit there and mock it because they told you that's what it said that, that a festoon is it's a, it's a decoration. Because what is a crown? A crown is the decorated king, it's not it said a garland of flowers or leaves or ribbons. Now, thorns by definition ain't leaves or flowers, but that's where they come from, right? And they put them right on his head. Come on back over here to first Kings chapter seven. That's why we lifting up the sacrifice of the shepherd. Because really that festoon is going to be symbolic of a decoration or a crown. Word, word. And that's right. As uh, Saran just put on that plaited thorns, as in twisted. Because that's pretty much what them dogs on thorns were, was a festoon, if you will. Now, of course, there's seven of these on each pillar. Let's continue in verse 18. And he made the pillars two rows round about upon the one network to cover the chapters that were upon the top with pomegranates. So did he for the other chapter. Now let's look at this one network. 
Network. Again, this is another netletic, and that's the word we just dealt with, sabaka. So this is a, a garment. The chapters that were upon the top of the pillars were of lily work in the porch for a few minutes. The chapters upon the two pillars had pomegranates also above, over against the belly, which was by the network. And the pomegranates were 200 in rows round about upon the other chapter. He set up the pillars in the porch of the temple. He set up the right pillar and called the name thereof Yachin. He set up the left pillar and called the name thereof Boaz. And upon the top of the pillar was lily work. So were the pillars. So was the work of the pillars finished. Let's look at his lily work before we get to their names. Lily. Shushan. So you got Sean, U, Sean, and Noon. Sean, U, Sean, and Noon. Now you know, you know what, you know what group of people use something akin to the lily flower? That would be the Egyptians with the lotus flower. You know what I'm saying? They had a real fascination with the lotus flower. You know what I'm saying? Real fascination with that because that dealt with horse. It's the lotus flower. Yes. I'm not sure. I'm not a flower guy. Well, I, I don't know nothing about those six point stars, but I can tell you what a lotus flower is. Lotus flower deal with ice. That is a lotus flower. It's an aquatic plant. Yeah, I mean, but the lotus deals with something else. That's why you see mermaids fashion in the way that they fashion. Uh, coming out of lotus flower it deals with the mother goddess. It doesn't have anything to do with us. You know what I'm saying? The reason why I say that is because they worship the creation. We do not. The front two in the front of the building. Now you can't really see it on here, but I think it's these two right here. That would be J. Chen and Boaz. He didn't give a name to the other pillars, but the first two, when you walk in the door, they got a name. Now let's look at those names. Now you have Ye Yaken. He will establish. This is also one of the names of the son of Simeon and a priest who was the head of the 21st course during the time of David. Also a priest during the time of uh, a Nehemiah. Now you got Yod, Kuf, Yod, and Noon, but it means that he will establish. Yod, Kuf, but we can go through I'm just mentioning what it is. For those characters here. Now, when you got Boaz, well, y'all know who that is, right? Because y'all done know some bald headed hoes been talking about they've been waiting on their Boaz all their life. Hey, what is it a lot of? Is it a lot? Of? And it means fleetness, waiting on their Boaz. Now, you know, Boaz was a kinsman redeemer. That's what he wore. Uh, and we went over that in the past. Boaz is representative of Yahusha. We just read about that word for kinsman redeemer last night. So it's ironic that you see that, that Solomon, not ironic, because clearly you will put that in his heart to do that. And he names two of the pillars, one meaning Yahuwah will establish, who shows you one who is a priest, because everyone who is named Yakin is a priest. And the other one named after the kinsman redeemer. And these are the two pillars at the front of the house. The priest that will establish and the kinsman redeem. You know what I'm saying? So I want you to come over here and look at it in, in this regard. Because we just, well, we don't really need to go in that great detail. Because we just talked about the priesthood of Melchizedek. So what did Yahusha establish? He reestablished the priesthood of Melchizedek by being your kinsman redeemer. This is what supports the house. This is why you got the crown on top of the, or the, uh, the check of work along with the, uh, what was the other thing you just look at with the Goodell on top of that or the reef work because he's showing you how he's the king and a priest at the same time. Now, of course, it's fleetness because what did Yahusha tell you? I come quickly. 
but is he coming quickly to, to establish the kingdom of Elohim? And he's establishing that because he is your kinsman redeemer. See, the, the attributes of how the house is built is actually conveying to us the gospel in the midst of that. Because why would he go through the purpose of telling you to construct a house that will never be built by men's hands? How do we know that? Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1. Let's hold on. You can go get Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1. What did he tell you in John chapter 2? We keep referencing it, right? He said, destroy this temple and he'll rear it up in three days, right? Then what did he tell you in Amos in that regard? That he will what? Raise up the ruins of the tabernacle of David. So this is something that Elohim has done. See, you ain't done this here. But see, let's look at it in Hebrew chapter 8 and verse 1. Look what it say. He said, now the things which he has, we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens. So we got in the establishment, right? Look what he tell you. Uh, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched in not hand. See, we so worried about we're going to build a new temple. And that's all these niggas be out here talking about they're going to build a third temple. And that's all dude be worried about. Now, what you care about them building the third temple for when we got a temple that's been made with our hands, made by yeah. you? I don't care nothing about no temple nobody making. But let's keep going. Though. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is a necessity that this man have, have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on the earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that are, there are priests that offer gifts according to Torah. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished to Elohim when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he say, see, for he say, he that you make all things according to the pattern showed to you in the mouth. But now he have obtained a more excellent ministry. For how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. And that's why you can see that other name being named Boaz, because I'm redeeming you from a covenant. That you broke, and I'm giving you better promises in the midst of that redemption. Therefore, I can establish it. So every time you walk into, because again, you see that your kin, those are priests, and specifically a high priest. When you're dealing with that, he was of the 24th course, and we talked about those courses, and those courses in First Chronicles chapter 24, if you don't recall, because David set an order of work and service so everybody would have their job to, to do the work of the ministry. Because contrary to popular belief, everybody ain't in the ministry, just like you've seen that. But let's come on back to Ezekiel chapter 41. Last day. Michael. Michael. What you over there doing? You paying attention? I know you're not. You think you're gonna get through life with the with the foolishness you got going on? Huh? Mike, you think you're gonna be very successful in life if you don't listen and you don't pay attention? Well, keep not listening and not paying attention. You're gonna find out real quick. I mean you're gonna be a bum. You're gonna be living in a van down by the river. Asking people to put money in your cup because you live on the street. But since you didn't want to behave and follow any rules and pay attention to anything, you didn't grow up to be a very intelligent man, so you weren't able to do things to be able to sustain yourself. I'm not a smart man. And yes, and the thing is, is you're not a, uh, you're not a dumb young man. You just want to do what you want to do. That's not a recipe for success, son. It's not a recipe for success. Yes, bird. What may I do for you? Well, why is it mermaid? What about a mermaid? But that way you said that. I ain't said nothing about no mermaid. Oh, earlier. You talking about earlier. No. Yeah. Oh, he held on to that. Yeah, he held on to it. Don't know what you talking about. I said, don't you talk about mermaids? We don't like mermaids. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we appreciate that, son. You got a strong memory, boy. Birds. Mermaids are good? No. That's right. They're not. Yeah. What are we at in Ezekiel 41? We're in Ezekiel 41 and verse 2, right? If y'all remember the word for, for breath was rokav, right? Raj, cotton, bot. And that's the set of partners by the son of the highest. That's the witch. 
because the sun is wide, this is what the breadth of the house, right? So let's be just, I'm just bringing that to your mind. So it's the set apartness of the tabernacle. That's Ezekiel 41 and 1. That's why we never got mad verse 1. Afterwards, he brought me to the temple and measured the pole six cubits broad on one side, six cubits broad on the other side, which was the breadth of the tabernacle. The breadth of the door was 10 cubits. The sides of the door were five cubits. And on the one side, five cubits. And on the other side, he measured the length thereof, 40 cubits, and the breadth, 20 cubits. Then he went inward and measured the post of the door. Two cubits in the door, six cubits in the breadth of the door, seven cubits. Now I want y'all to sit back and look at this word for cubit because you see it a lot. It's amal. You got olive, meme, and hay. So you can go here. Olive, meme, and hay. Now a cubit is about 18 inches. So it's about a foot and a half. So when you see that he said the door is two cubits, it's about 36 inches. So the door is about three feet. The post of the door is about three feet tall. Now the door itself is about six cubits. So that's going to be what? 108? 108 inches is about what? Nine feet. When he tell you the breadth of it is seven, that's uh, 126. So you're looking at about 10 feet. About 10 and a half feet. <laughs> hey, Eugene, Eugene, relax. Relax. I'm tired. Oh, you're tired? Well, you might want to speak to your father about finding you some accommodation. Olive, meme, and hay. Muffin, close your legs. Olive, meme, and hay. Bird, this is the bird. This is not the time for that bird. No joke. He just want to make silly faces in the camera. You got to get you a phone and do that when you're grown and you got somebody to call and not go stuff. Oh, you like tablets. You like tablets. All right, children. Okay, children. What y'all got for that olive meme and hay? This is the word for cubit, so the, the measure of a distance. Wow. Wow. Now it does make a distinction also about cubits that the cubits in the measurement of a man are slightly lesser than the cubits of a measurement in the temple. You know what I'm saying? Because you know some people are crazy. Goliath was nine feet tall. And they be like, so what? At the end of the day, it's been people recorded on the earth that were about feet tall. No, he was an anomaly. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, of course, because we just don't consider how different it was for people in that time period to see a seven foot, eight foot tall man. Because now they done made sports so commonplace. You seeing a six foot ten, seven foot one basketball player, even though you know you don't see people of that height in everyday living, as if that's kind of normal. A nigga shack size is not normal. And he, and, and, as far as basketball players is concerned, he's not that tall. Wow. I'm talking about in regards to some of the tallest people who have played that game. He's 7'1. 
That's different. But I'm talking about. But you got. Now I'm saying because in my time period, when Shaq played, Sean Bradley played. He was seven six. Manu Bowl played. He was seven seven. Yao Ming played. He was seven six. No, there were other players in the league when he played that were taller than him. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm talking about is, is that how many of you have seen a seven foot tall man in everyday life? You play basketball. I mean, I've seen one, but you ain't gonna. I'm talking about pulling up, pulling up to, to, to the grocery store, and you see this old big tall man. You know what I'm saying? Who you telling? There you go. You definitely gonna see more obese people in America than you gonna see tall. This is a country full of niggas who just like this. I was just saying that. So you go to other countries, right? No, you don't hold on to them. Obese people. Definitely gonna see a bunch of tall people. Cause you know y'all mean was it is an anomaly in, in, in China. Um, that is true. <laughs> that is true. You know what I'm saying? It's not it's not a regular occurrence. So you can see, you can see because you know they said over time that the average height of man has increased according to their studies. What they, how they figure all this stuff? I don't. Know. You know what I'm saying? But you know, at one time it was like the average height of a man. I mean, we know people wasn't that tall because it made reference to let us know that Saul was taller than everybody. You know what I'm saying? So you know that in general, people aren't six feet tall, six three, six four. It ain't too many six feet tall people now. Um, Not as forth as the general population. We're talking about on average. <laughs> but yeah, but you're talking about on average. Average. You're above average height. You're the only two out of eight men in the only two of those. Because they say the average height of a man in America is five ten. And that's increased by 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 a couple of inches in the last forty to fifty years. Because there was a time period where the average height of a man was five seven. I got two I told you. He said he's six two. Huh? Yeah, he said he's six two. But I mean, that's not saying that it's not six feet. We're not saying about, but on average, on average, because 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 you know why it's not, and you you know how we know it's not common, because the minute somebody sees somebody over six feet, they automatically assume you play some man of basketball. If it was commonplace, nobody would assume that somebody who had height on them had to play basketball. In this country, anyway. So we can't speak for the rest of the world. But we're just talking about on average. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell you the other day, on average, the average person looks the same. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm being dead serious. Like it ain't it ain't it ain't a whole lot of real distinct facial features in the earth that is drastically different. You know what I'm saying? Most people on the earth look the same. And why does everybody on the earth look the same? Because you descend from one man. Whether you want to deal with it or not, everybody on the earth descends from Adam and you're the offspring of Noah's three sons. That's why everybody look the same because you are the same genetic makeup. That's why when you see a family of people, whether they be quote unquote black or quote unquote white or quote unquote Asian or quote unquote Arab or this nigga's a simpleton. You know what I'm saying? Of every family in the earth, they all generally share the same facial features. You know what I'm saying? See, you weren't listening. Every family of the earth. That's why we enumerated each one. Because when you take a group of Asian people, whether they be Vietnamese, whether they be from Laos, whether they be from China, whether they be from Japan, you see that common genetic thread in all of their facial features. 
whether you quote unquote quote unquote Negroid, all of us share the same common genetic facial features. Whether you quote unquote Caucasian, I don't care if you're Italian, I don't care if you're Irish, I don't care if you're British, I don't care where you come from, German, you can see that they share that same thing. You take Africans, you can look at them and tell, boom, they're of that people. They look the same because you all descend from the same families. So there's not going to be people of a particular racial group, and they look drastically different from everybody. And that's why so many people say, oh, I thought you were such and such, or you look like such and such, or you look like such and such. Or people get upset when they say all black people look the same. Well, you're from the same family, so I would reach we might have a resemblance. You know what I'm saying? And that's just what that is, right? That's just what that is, man. I mean, at the end of the day, it's only three classifications of people. Negroid, mongoloid, and cognizant. You are aware of that? What you is, a mongoloid? Shoot, you think like one. You think like a mongrel. You know what a mongrel is? You think I'm trying to be funny. You know what a scoundrel is? So you were finished before you arrived. Mm. You're a cake unturned. A cake unturned. <laughs> you the nigga who make pancakes but forgot to flip the cake. Out <laughs> So you got one side that's brown and the other side blue. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga around here built like a gusher, like how they say. Gooey. Ezekiel 41 and 4. Oh, what you said for that, Imam? My bad. I heard you when you said it. <laughs> that power in that blood. Now you sit back and see that's why you see that breath, that measurements. Huh? Let's keep on rolling though. 41 and 4. So he measured the length thereof 20 cubits, the breath 20 cubits before the temple. And he said unto me, This is the most Kadash place. So what he just was measuring. In the beginning of 41 is the is the Kadasha Kadasha, the holy of the holy. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep on rolling, verse 5. And he measured the wall of the house six cubits. So the wall is about nine feet tall. And the breadth of every side chamber four cubits. So that's 72 inches. So that's about six feet. I feel like I skipped it before I was at. I did. Round about the house on every side. Because I got to crank it up because we don't get to eat cherry bits to deal with that height. And the side chambers were three over one another, 30 in order. They entered into the wall, which was of the house of the side chambers round about. That they might have holes, but they lay not hold in the wall of the house. And there was an enlarging and a winding up still upward to the side chambers. For the winding up of the house went still upward round about the house. Therefore, the breadth of the house was still upward, and so increased from the lowest chamber to the highest by the midst. So let's discuss that. Number one, when you look at enlarging, that's a reply. Again, this is a grow wide. Rosh cotton bot. You can go ahead. This is to be wide or to make room. So there was a, a an enlarging, or they made room, and a winding upward to these side chambers. That's Rosh cotton bot. I think we just talked about that a little while ago. Now, the next word is sabah. That is the turn or around the side or change direction. Also, to transform or to enclose, to envelop, to assemble round. I'll get to those characters in a minute. But Rosh Cotton Pot, for that enlarging. That's pretty, that should be pretty easy. You can be separated by the son of the highest. You could be separated into the house of the highest. More likely separated to the house of the highest because that's what we're talking about. So why does he got to, to enlarge it and make it wider? Because more people come in the door that. There'll be more people dwelling in the kingdom of Yahuwah than dwelling in that land. I guarantee you that. Yeah. 
That's a long time. That's a long time. Now, this word, other words, sabab, you got sama in double box. So you can take time, but you take your time on that one. Sama, bot, and bot. Bot, bot, bot. Don't say bot, bot. Boy, they're going to go and try. Try. <laughs> Try, 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 they're trying to get in there. He said, because guess what he told you, right? Because he said this is a winding up, still upward. So this is the turn, take you upward. Now keep on rolling now. He said, for the winding about of the house, was it went still upward. So let's look at winding. Now this is a different word, right? Let's look at winding. It's musa. This is an encompassing, a surrounding about, or a circuit of a building. Mean, ooh, samak, and pot. Mean, ooh, samak, and pot. You know what they mean? Well, somebody need to email you that stuff. Yeah, you got an email address for your phone? Well, we're going to have to get you right. I'll give it to you. And it would be best for you to, to be as, as normal people would and just text that information over. <laughs> Yeah. Well, to be his brother, I may sue, but nevertheless, nigga, I'm not gonna remember that and type all that out. We can just type it and I can copy it and uh and, and CC him from there. Right. So you call it what you want, boy. I done misapplied many an email address. So yeah, you just go ahead and just send that to me. When some of y'all to drop the email address, I definitely copied it and pasted it right into that uh in that two line. But he ain't tried to get no word and man you up. I think it was at the house rubbing his belly, eating snacks, getting fat. That's right. Wondering if he fell off the map. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Because he looked just like one of them niggas from that group. Dirty boy doesn't hit the floor. Oh, you must don't know about that song. So y'all must ain't like that song. Some niggas from Alabama. I saw you like you never said Them dirty boy out of mid though. Oh, that's from the early 2000s. Yeah, early 2000s. Now hit the floor. That's where I got that from. He said, What you think we've been sitting in the house? Eating snacks, getting fat. No, they from Georgia, but they came out at the same time. Them boys dropped about 2001, 2002. Grab hold of the sacrifice of the son's blood. I can dig it. Yeah, he didn't get that. Udo. Yeah, you know, you got a little grab hold of that blood, you know, or sit back and see. Grab hold yeah, you know that blood established you. Grab hold to that house. Grab hold to that son. Because what you doing? What does he tell you in Zechariah eight point three? That right people of a whole bunch of nations will come together. Oh, <laughs> you see, that's what I say. What you know about the people and the gangsters? See, she know about them boys. They don't know about them boys. See, I'm old. That's what I know. They looking at me like, who was this boy talking about? I know. See, my tell listen to you. I know he know. I can tell you about artists. You be like, well, what you know about that? That's for your time. You say, well, I'm artist. I rap on niggas from fun. And for feet. You know what I'm saying? We gonna get that nigga in the sun. You know, you know, he eat for a living. We gonna send him out to the nations. You know about nations? Oh. On the 4th of July, the nations. <laughs> not the week. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm about that nigga. That's what he Oh, that nigga eat a lot of wieners that day. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Let it be known. Not this type of thing. Mm. Yeah. 
That's right. That's right, Mr. Young Lady. The old man got to go. It's about that cover. Let's come on rolling, right? But I want y'all to keep in mind that the chamber or the circuit continues to go up. And what did we read in First Timothy three? That they say that Elohim was received up into esteem. And that goes back to what we read in Philippians about our conduct being in heaven. See, come to Colossians chapter three. Remember, Mashiach said in John six and sixty two. What and if you shall see me ascend to back where I was before. Also dealing with that we got a tabernacle that is from heaven. That Allah he made and not man. See the whole Colossians 3 and 1. See the whole thing is our mind is set on heaven. <laughs> Colossians 3 and 1. If you then be risen with Mashiach Seek those things which are above when Mashiach sit on the right hand of Elohim and set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. You are dead and your life is hid with Mashiach and Elohim. Correct. That is correct. That is correct. And when Mashiach, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in esteem. Because he just mentioned that the Hebrew word for a sin is Allah. You know what I'm saying? A L A H. But we also look at how this, these stairs in this house continually wind up. I'm going to read that again. There was an enlarging and a winding still upward to the sides of the chamber. For the winding about the house still went upward round about the house. Therefore, the breadth of the house was still upward and increased from the lowest chamber to the highest by the midst. Let's look at all of that. So I want you to look at still upward, and it's my all. Right? That's the higher part, the upper part, higher ground, higher above. Mean, Ayin, Lamaj. Mean, Ayin, and Lamaj. Now, the side chambers, of course, you know that's the side chambers or the cells of the temple structure. Try to show y'all a picture of that. If I can get a good picture of it. Here's a little bit. Uh, well, y'all ain't gonna be able to see it because of that glare. But here's what the side chambers look like. So it wound it about higher and higher. So what these side chambers look like. Right, that was pointing out. You see that monkey over there? He's crazy. He brought up everybody. And of course, you can also see what those temples look like. This particular one being Boaz on this side. Let's see what that looks like. See, I gotta try to bring that. Maybe you can, yeah, you can, y'all can see that a little better. See that a little better. That's the side chamber right there. What y'all got for that meme, Aina Lamad, but I still up. Well, you already know I ain't you either know you experienced. Yeah, I don't know. And you don't know the ruach of the shepherd. Because that's how you're going to be able to go upward. There you go. You know and experience the ruach of the shepherd. Let's continue. Make sure we don't need nothing else out of that. Now, of course, when it says still upward, so increase. There's a lot, as Sister Shais just mentioned, and that's to ascend or to climb or to go up. Or to take oneself away or to be exalted, to be ascended, to be offered, to be led up. So when it tells you that, that the upward, that the house was still upward or the, the house was high and increased from the lowest chamber to the highest. Now, chamber to the highest, of course, you know, you got uh, Elyon or the highest or the most high. 
or the higher or the upper. But let's continue to roll down, right? So you say, I also saw in the height of the house round about the foundations of the side chambers were a full reed of six great cubits. Now, there's a different word for height than the one that we use in Proverbs 23 that's used here. And it's go by. So this is your exaltation, your grandeur, your height. You got Gamal, Bot, and Hay. And you can go ahead. Gamal, Bot, and Hay. Gamal, Bot, and Hay. That man. What's up, man? That man. Batman. You got Batman. You tubby boy. Tubby man. Come on, Biden. Hey. Word, word, word. What y'all got for that? Saran got behold the lifting up of the sun. Quiet, you do. Oh, you have a little tiny food? I hear you. I understand that you'd like to talk to me right now. I can talk to you later, bro. Well, come give me a hug, then. Well, you can come get you one, too, bro. Clearly, you won't. Now, go sit down. And be quiet. Go sit down. Be quiet. Sit down. Anybody else got something for that? Little Joe, what they did to you? <laughs> Anybody got anything they want to offer before we roll with that? Roll up. Yeah, Saran, I got to say anything pretty much what Saran got. But I got lifted up. We lifted up to the house of the highest. And certainly that note, Saran put up the lift up. Behold the lifting up of the sun. Yeah, the house of the sun is lifted up, or the body of the sun is lifted up because he's lifting up his wife. He told you that? I think he told you that in Isaiah 54 in that regard. But we're not going to grab that right now. Let's keep going, but we got a lot to grab. I don't think we did a secret before we yet have I don't believe that we have. So we got to hit everything. We are in verse 9. Figure 41. The thickness of the wall, which was for the side chamber without, was five cubits. That which was left was the place of the side chambers that were within. Between the chambers were the wideness of 20 cubits round about, the house on every side. The doors of the side chambers were towards the place that was left, the one towards the north, other were door towards the south. The breadth of that place that was left was five cubits round. Now the building that was before the separate place at the end towards the west was 70 cubits broad. And the wall of the building was five cubits thick round about, and the length thereof 90 cubits. So he measured the house 100 cubits long, and the separate place in the building and the walls thereof were 100 cubits. So hold on. So you got 100 cubits times 18. That's 1,800 divided by uh, 12. It's 150 feet. Also, the breadth of the face of the house in a separate place towards the east, 100 cubits. So the width of the face of the house is 150 feet wide. But we'll deal with that with breath, y'all will, next week. He measured the length of the building over against the separate place, which was behind it, and the galleries thereof on one side and on the other side, 100 cubits, within the inner temple and the fortress of the court. Now, let's look at what galleries are. That word for galleries is a tech, and that is a porch, a ledge, an offset in the building. Continue. The doorposts and the narrow windows and the galleries round about on their three stories over against the door sealed with wood round about from the ground up to the windows, and the windows were covered. To above the door, even unto the inner house and without, and by all the wall round about and within and without by measure. And it was made with cherubims and palm trees. So that a palm tree was between a cherub and a cherub, and every cherub had two faces. 
so that the face of the man was towards the palm tree on the one side and the face of a young lion towards the palm tree on the other side. And it was made through all the house round about. From the ground until the above the door were cherubims and palm trees made and on the wall of the temple. The post of the temple was squared and the face of the sanctuary, the appearance of the one as the appearance of the other. Now, let's talk about them cherubim. What y'all know about cherubim? What y'all know about cherubim other than they on the Ark of the Covenant? I didn't ask you what you thought. I asked you what you know. Is that what you know? I'm not asking to be fun. I'm asking what do y'all know about cherubim? So it's not a question of seeking a right or wrong answer. I'm asking what do y'all know about cherubim? Cherubim would be like a highest They are an angelic being, yes, they are. Flame of fire, Ron say that. We're gonna read all that because that's why I speed this up. Because I'm gonna spend about a good 40 to 45 minutes talking about these chairs. That's correct. They did protect the tree a lot. <laughs> yeah. I believe you're correct. That is correct. Well, we're going to read it all, so it's all great. We're going to read it all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did we use the phrase? Oh, good. Uh, hold on, I can't. I can't. Uh, yeah, they covered the mercy. Let me get y'all this character. <laughs> word. Now, cherubim, uh, cherub is Peru. You got Ka, Rosh, U, and Ba. Ka, Rosh, U, and Ba. We're out here talking about they sexual time. That nigga right there. No, that nigga breed Hershey's milk chocolate. That nigga can turn everybody milk to a nice cold beverage. Clearly, he. Oh, I ain't gonna have nothing when you when I'm done. Not nothing. Mm. 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 The only thing you ever had was was Palmina and her sister. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? He didn't give her no name. That nigga just look at her. He called her Shane. Palmina. That, that that nigga ain't never been to jail. Know how to make a fee fee? Ain't that something? <laughs> that nigga said he did three weeks in the county. He had a pee pee. Oh, yeah. How can I tell you that before? You. Cough, Rosh, Ooh, and Bot. Oh, I say. The praise, the praise of the house is that right? Anybody else? Don't they say that they do around the house? That's correct. Praise them? That's what they do. They ain't going home. Yeah, I, I meant to tell her Ezekiel, I got, and, and then it slipped right out my mind. Chief placed down to touch a house. I was, I was going to go some other places, but I definitely was going to go here. So we're going to Ezekiel 10 off top. We're going to Ezekiel 10 off top because there's a lot of places with the chairs. But we're going to Ezekiel 10 off top. Oh, man. As a, Make it work. Besides, uh, Ezekiel, besides you, 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 you,
nobody sees them terrible. So I, I just, no, it's not too many people that got issues. I was just saying that they see them they definitely If you seen the cherubim, you certainly would know it. You definitely would know it. Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 1. That's what he said. That's what he asked. It ain't too many people seen. About Ezekiel. Uh, that's about it. It ain't, it ain't nobody but Ezekiel. Ezekiel the only one who's seen one. Anybody else done discussed it based off the images that was given to create it? But Ezekiel is the only one in the text who saw him. He saw them a few times. Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 1. No, John didn't see a cherubim. John got messages from angels. Yeah, it ain't too many people in there. Yeah, Ezekiel the only one in the, in the script. Mm -hmm. and Adam, Adam ain't seen none either. So I don't. I don't even know if he's seen them when they uh when he put them up at the block the garden. Of Eve. So ain't even no guarantee that he actually saw them. Yeah, that's it, man. Ezekiel the only one. Ezekiel is the only one that saw a cherubim. A cherubim, a cheraphim, and an angel are three different creatures. And Ezekiel is the only person in the text who saw a cherubim. Only person. Nobody else in the text seen a cherubim. Not with their own eyes in a vision. They have the description that Yahuwah gave in creating them, but he is the only one in prophetic vision that saw it. I don't know. I ain't read the book of Enoch, so I'm a, I can only go by what what's in the law and the prophets. So yeah. I can't I can't speak on hey, hey. Ezekiel ten and one. Then I looked and behold, the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims there appeared over them as it were sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. So what is over and above the cherubims? See back up, right? Hold on. Come over here to chapter nine. Come over here to chapter 9. Come over here to Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 1. He said, he also cried also in my ears with a loud voice saying, cause them that have charge over the city to draw near and every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the higher gate, which lie towards the north. Every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. One man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's ink horn by his side. They went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the esteem of Elohim of Yasharal was gone up from the chair. Wherefore, whereupon he was, he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's ink horn by his side. So the cherub departed from Yahuwah to tell the one who had an ink on in his hot side, go kill these niggas. And this is what Ezekiel is looking at. Come on back over here to chapter 10. Because I just want y'all to see that because he has faked this already. He said, then I looked and behold the firmament. Look at that verse 1. When you see this here, right, the throne of Mashiach is above the cherubim. I take you what's in Hebrews chapter 1 and in Psalm 45 that he has a higher estate than these mountain kings. Let's continue. Now, why is the chair being not covering the throne like in the past? Because Yahusha has been revealed. There's no reason to keep him covered. But that's another conversation for a little later. He spake unto the man clothed with linen and said, go in between the wheels, even under the chair. Fill your hand with coals of fire between the cherubims and scatter them over the city. And he went in my sight. Now, look, let's see, right? Let's look at go in between the wheels. Wheels is gall, gall. This is not a wheel like a real wheel, like ignorant men like to tell you. This is a whirlwind. What does it tell you about you who in the whirlwind? Mm. He come in the clouds. He come in the heavens. This ain't no wheel. Mm. Niggas is dumb if they really think you're going to look in the sky and see a wheel with spokes on it. Mm. <laughs> chariot. Like, niggas really looking for real chariots and horses. Niggas pure jackass. All the way around the board. That is Gamal, Lamad, Gamal, and Lamad. You can go again and go do what you will with it. So this is the heavens. You understand? 
He told them to go under the heavens and grab the fire. Go in between the wheels. That's right. Took them right in the wind. Took them into heaven. Now, let me ask y'all this here. Who who can, who know the script where it talk about going in between the wheels or the or the heavens and getting some fire? Because it's in the prophets. I know y'all know. Who went and got some coals of fire? Not in Ezekiel. But it is one of the major prophets. That's right, Saran. Saran is correct. Mm -hmm. No, not Daniel. Come over here to Isaiah chapter 6. Hot right. right, cold. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. Hot right, cold. Ain't that what your man say? He spent hot. I seen a nigga post a meme that like the other day. A nigga post a meme about my favorite rap. And every single solitaire photograph was that nigga who spit hot fire. <laughs> That nigga probably working at Little Caesars. Talking about you want to fire for five? Nigga say, ain't you Dylon? And I spit hot fire. Now you want hot jalapenos on this pizza or not? Huh? Right. Honest man out. He got a mixtape called Nobody Hurt. Cause ain't nobody hurt. You went about it, didn't you? That's your man. And I don't play that boy. Probably been stopped making music. All right. Oh, I, I, I actually seen the show when it was on. That, that boy there was a fool. That boy ain't yeah. him. That boy was happy to be on TV. Isaiah 61. Absolutely. In the year, in that year, King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Let me tell you what that train is, right? Let's say that train filled that temple. Train is shoe. The skirt or a high priest robe. So what you've seen is. The the, the the priestly garment is what he had on. No, but no, more so of what's described in Ezekiel 28, like how we were talking about that garment that Yahoo shot on had and had that girdle. You were sitting on the throne with a high priest garment. So his garment filled the temple. He said above it stood the seraphim. Now that's a different creature. All right. So we'll talk about that right now. That is the Sarah. That's the characters. Sean, Ra, and Pei. Now listen, those are the ones that got six wings. Each one has six wings. See, matter of fact, hold on. With twain, he covered his face. And with twain, he covered his feet. And with twain, he did fly. <laughs> Now, when you're dealing with, now it also means fiery serpent. Now, when it comes to them seraphims, they're not mentioned in the text nowhere but in Isaiah chapter 6, and that's it. It's not talked about, discussed anywhere else. And it said that those six wings covered their face, covered their feet. And when it say with twain, that's two. I was on the fly. Really just, a wing. just a wing flying. That's it. And one cried unto another and said, Kadash, 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 is he who of hosts? The whole earth is full of his esteem. The post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, who of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims under me, having a live coal in his hand, 
which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. Yeah, yeah. And he laid it upon my mouth. And lo, said, lo, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away. Your sin is purged. So these coals can represent two things. They can represent you out of here, or they can represent your purification. With Isaiah, it represents his purification. And Ezekiel, somebody finna die. Now go back to Ezekiel chapter 10. See, that's, that's again the difference. But see, because see, the cherubims had the face of a man and a lion. Seraphims had the face of a man. It is good. Oh, you like the man? Oh, that's very nice. What may I do for you, Abigail? No, you're not getting a fair city. You're moving out of the way, huh? Back to Ezekiel chapter 2. Yes, it is. It's the same word. That word, Seraph, is the same word for fiery serpent, for the serpent in number 20. Verse 2 of Ezekiel chapter 2. Jeremiah James Bird. Relax. Relax. And he spake unto the man clothed with fine linen and said, Go in between the wheels or go because if you're going in between the whirlwind, you're going in between you're going to the altar. But you're going in the midst of Halloween, even under the chair. Because if that let's just see what you want to look. And fill your hand with the coals of fire from between the cherubims and scatter them over the city. And he went in my sight. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house. And when the man went in, the cloud filled the inner court. The esteem of Yahuwah went up from the chair and stood over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud and the court was full of the brightness of Yahuwah's esteem. Now who else had the same similar situation with the house being filled with Yahuwah? No, not in the gospel. That, that happened with uh with Solomon when he built the house the first time. And the sound of the cherubim's wings was heard even to the outer court, as the voice of Allahi. That's right, as the voice of Almighty Allahi when he speaks. So it say the sound of the cherubim's wings was as powerful as Yahuwah's voice. They didn't have a temple, but that same type of thing happened. To a certain extent. Yes, to a certain extent. Verse 6. And it came to pass that when he had commanded the man clothed with linen, saying, Take fire from between the wheels, from between the cherubims, he went in and stood beside the wheels. And one chair stretched his hand from between the cherubims in, unto the fire that was between the cherubims, took thereof, and put it in the hands of him that was clothed with linen, who took it and went out. And there appeared in the cherubims the form of a man's hand under their wings. When I looked, behold, the four wheels by the cherubims, one wheel by one chair, another wheel by another chair. As the appearance of the wheels was of the color of barrel stone. As for their appearances, they four had one likeness as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. So when they tell you that, it said as if heaven was in the midst of heaven. Now I want you to sit back and look at that. Now, now we have a different word for wheel. We have Ophan. That is olive, u, pay, and noon. Now I tell you the wheel in Ezekiel's vision but it also tell you the wheels of the ten bases beneath the labors of Solomon's temple. Because at the end of the day, when he's seeing all these wheels, what is he seeing? Because he's already telling you that if he's seeing coals of fire being taken in between the midst of cherubim, what is he actually seeing? He's actually seeing the temple of, uh, of Elohim. All you have to do is go back and look at the top. Look at other stuff as you can see that that's what he's seeing. He's not seeing a chariot, so to speak. He's seeing the house. How do we know he's seeing the house? 
Verse 1 lets you know he's seeing the house. Because verse 1 told you that he looked and behold in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims that there appeared sapphire stone as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. What y'all know about sapphire stone and a throne in the law? Y'all know about sapphire stone and throne in the law? You know about that? Know about that? Mm -hmm. That's why I told you. We don't whoop, man. That was mm -hmm. easy. He said, I would tweet. And she said, you better stay at the hospital with all night. Know about that? In the law, where is that? Not an e bar. No, it is. But not in this instance. That's not what we want. No, it is not. No, you know, it is not. Come over here to Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24 and verse 9. He said, Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Ebu and 70 of the elders of Gasherah. And they saw the Elohim of Gasherah. And there was under his feet, as it were the paved work of sapphire stone, as it were in the body of Shamahim and his clearness. And upon the nobles of the sons of Yasharal, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. So they called an image of Elohim's throne. Word, word, word. So what you see in Ezekiel, what does he call the image of? He saw the throne. That means he's seeing the temple. He's not seeing a chariot. Because that's why I mentioned that those wheels are the base of the temple. He's seeing the base of the house. What Ezekiel is getting to see is the whole house. He saw Yahuwah, not Yahusha to be specific, in his esteem in the heavenly realm in regards to after this man the resurrection. Because you know these boys were seeing stuff that had already happened. Like when, when, when Isaiah was getting the image of old Lucifer, how you falling from heaven, and you'll be he he's seeing this before it happened. Because remember, he was what slain from the foundation of the world. This already doesn't happen. But when they see it, of course, it hasn't happened as far as our time is concerned. You know what I'm saying? But when he's seeing it, he's seeing they seeing the finished product. But they don't have no understanding that they're seeing the finished product. That's why it's better for us to be alive while we're alive. Versus when that because we get to see the finished product as as Mashiach had already stated it right that we get to see things where he was talking to his apostles they saw and heard things that righteous men did not get to hear and see that's why you can't take the knowledge of Mashiach for granted because you are a part anybody who was born or alive upon his resurrection is a part of a blessed generation the generation before his death and resurrection was blessed. But you get to have, you don't have to be wondering, what does this mean? Who does this speak of? Has he came? You don't have to do any of that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's been revealed. But well, come on back to Ezekiel chapter 10, though. And I'm doing this here. And this is not to ridicule people who thought it was a chariot. This is for us to understand that he's not looking at Yahuwah riding on a chariot. He is seeing the house of Elohim, which is why we read Ezekiel 40 and the stuff that we look at that. Because if you talk about what's that's written in Ephesians about the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth, that's talking about the things in regards to a house. You know what I'm saying? So we want to have to be able to comprehend or lay hold to the things, to lay hold to the things in the house. Lay hold. So I just want y'all to see that there, right? Because how else, because that's why we went and read in Isaiah chapter six. How else can they get the coals of fire unless they be in the house? Is it coals of fire in a chariot? What you gonna get coals of fire from? It's gotta come from the altar. What was the altar for? It was for the burning of the sacrifices. This is in the house of Elohim that we look at. Say what's on the coals of fire when it Okay. You talk to yourself because ain't nobody else to talk to. Now I want you to look at night. This I think it's a word we used before. Yeah, we have the moose. We don't need to keep doing that. Verse eleven of Ezekiel ten. 
And when they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not as they went. But the, to the place whither the head looked, they followed it, and they turned not as they went. No, you know, look what it said. Whether the head looked, they followed it. He said, when they went, they went upon their four sides. They turned not as they went, but to the place, whether the head or the rosh looked, they followed it. What does that tell us? Mashiach already told you to follow the straight gate. Paul told you to follow him as he followed Mashiach. So wherever Yahuwah went, that's where they went. What does that tell you? That's in Proverbs chapter 4, by verse 23. To that he told the guard your heart because the issues of life come up out of it and not to go to the left hand nor to the right hand, but keep it straight. Because wherever you will go, matter of fact, John chapter 12. Jeremiah James Bird. What may I do for you? Make sure. Oh, you trying to watch. Oh. Okay. So there's nothing that I can do for you. That makes sure I feel like I'm. I just was trying to make sure that there was, if there was anything that I could do for you. There we go. I'm, I'm tripping. I'm looking right at it. John chapter 12, verse 20. Is there anything I can do for you? And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. Now there came to therefore to Philip, which was at Bethesda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we will see Yahusha. Philip come and tell Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Yahusha. Yahusha answered them, saying, The hour is come that the son a man should be esteemed. Truly, truly, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abide alone. But if it die, it bring forth much fruit. He that love his life shall lose it. He that hate his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Where I am, there also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my Abba honor. See, that's the whole key thing. Wherever, Because he, he went wherever his father turned, that's where he went. If you're going to serve Mashiach wherever he go, that's where you got to go. If you're going to be in his house, you think you're going to dwell in this man's house and do what you want to do? You dwell in your Abba house and do what you want to do? Yes. Well, that's your problem, son. That means you a disobedient child. You a disobedient child? No. Then you can't, then you can't be in your Abba's house doing what you want to do. Not mm -hmm. So what does that mean that you got to do? You got to do what you told him. You got to be a big boy. That's right. You a big boy? Yeah. No, you ain't no big boy. You are a little girl. Yes, you are a little girl. Yes, grandma. What may I do for you? Don't do that. Don't do that. Grandma. Go see your mama, grandma. Verse 11 again. When they went, they went up on their four sides. They turned out as they went. But to the place whither the head looked, they followed it. They turned out as they went. Their whole body and their backs, their hands, their wings, they, with the wheels were full of eyes round about, even the wheels that the four had. Let's look at their wheels here again to make sure we got the same thing going on. Now you got Ophan, the base again. As for the wheels, it cried unto them in my hearing, O will. Now that's gall gall when it comes to will. Cried out out of the heavens. Everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub. The second face was the face of a man. The third face was the face of a lion. The fourth, the face of an eagle. Now, why would you think it would be lions, men, or the face of a cherub, a man? A lion and an eagle. That's that, that, that with the eagle, because that's what he said he brought you out with. And that right, that's what he said he brought you out with. A lion is self-explanatory. Man is self-explanatory. And the face of a chair, we don't know what that is. 
because it's not described. The face of a cherub is the face of a cherub, whatever that is. If we be counted worthy enough to find that out in due time. Yes, sir, the son of man. You got Yahoo Shah, you got that line. You got the representation of really full things. When you look at chairs, because we're going to read that in Ezekiel 28 in a second. You got this angelic being that covers. You got the son of man. You got the line of Judah or the king. And you got the eagle for deliverance and rescuing and salvation. That's why the cherubs is in the house, and that's what they represent. We are in verse 15. And the cherubims were lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river Kibar. And when the cherubims went, up, went, the wheels went by them. And when the cherubims lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, the same wheels also turned not from beside them. And when they stood, these stood. And when they lifted up, these lifted up themselves also for the Ruach of the living creature was in them. Then the esteem of Yahuwah departed from off the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubim. The cherubims lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight. They went out. The wheels also were beside them. Everyone stood at the door of the east gate of Yahuwah's house and the esteem of the Elohim of Yasharal was over above them. This confirms even more that they in the house. This is a living creature that I saw under the Alahim of Yasharal by the river Kibar, and I knew that they were cherubims. Everyone had four faces of peace. Everyone had four wings, and the likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings. The likeness of their faces were the same faces I saw by the river Kibar, their appearances of themselves, and they went everyone straight forward. So now when you look at these, these cherubims, they're going straight forward. Straight is a bar. It's Ayin, Bot, and Raj. You know the son of the highest. That's why you keep that straight gate. Come to Ezekiel 28. The son we ain't talked about in a long time. When you talk that Ezekiel 28 is talking about Satan, sir. You were taught Ezekiel 28 talking about Satan? I don't need to know who. 28 and 1. It's definitely not safe. Definitely not safe. Y'all remember us talking about that anointed cherub in Ezekiel 28? How many of y'all used to believe that was safe? Now let me let me ask you this here. Why did you believe that was safe when they taught you that? Well, because you said that it was made excellent and you built the parts. Okay, I get that. But why did you believe that they that was Satan when they taught you? Because that's what. Because you no, know, I mean, listen to what I'm asking. Because all you're doing is reciting back to me what they told you. But why did you believe that that was Satan when they told you that? Well, I believe that the first time I was told that he was the one to do you know, okay, so I'm asking you that. Now, when you say you believe he was over music and that before you keep that, that was yeah. now where you got that from? Uh, I got it. Uh, I think the book of Jasher, uh, Jasher, 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 Jasher. But you never read it in the script. That's right, too, that it being crossed over, too. I've seen it. I never read it in the actual script. Now, I'm going, we're going to run through this. These people in here know because we done dealt with this before. This ain't the devil. Listen to what he tell you, right? The word of you who came unto me again saying, son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, for this who we, in the physical, this who we talking to. Thus saith you who are Allahim, because your heart is lifted up, and you said I am Allahim, and I sit in the seat of Allahim, in the midst of the seas, yet you are a man, and not Allahim, as though you set your heart as the heart of Allahim. Behold, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from you. Now, is Satan wiser than Daniel? That's what it just said. If people believe it, now I'm asking you this, because they already know this. We've done this several times over the course of years, but you have not heard it. So don't think that I'm picking on you. I'm asking you this because you've been on the contrary understanding. So I want you to pay attention to what is actually said here. Because he can tell you if I ask. We just listen to me. We went over this like three, four times. The first time we did it in depth, some of them weren't here. We came back and did it again in depth for those that weren't here. 
So I'm not busting your balls or being funny right now. I'm asking you this because you have been taught the contrary understanding. I'm trying to get you to actually singularly focus on what is actually said here. Can I ask a question? Well, see, see uh, I was taught that, you know, that he wasn't actually speaking to the prince, but he was actually okay, that, speaking that, to the spirit. That, 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 doesn't, that doesn't matter. Because it said he talking to the prince of Tyre. Ain't that what it said? Ain't that what it just said? I get all that. But what did it just say, though? So that's the nigga's interpretation. He didn't say he's speaking to the spirit and the prince of Tyre. If he's speaking to the prince, the spirit and the prince of Tyre, guess who he's still talking to? You know what I'm saying? So that's the, you have to sometimes sit back. I'm trying to, I'm trying to tell you something, son. You have to sit back and actually listen to what somebody say to you and see that a nigga actually be insulting your intelligence the whole time. And you don't even realize. It. Like I said, I'm not being funny. I'm just being, being singularly focused because you're the only person in this room that don't know this. You know what I'm saying? You know, you remember this yet? Oh, you don't know it either. Okay, well, it's all good. Why? Oh, that's right. You don't know it either. You got, you got the glasses hanging on, you know, like somebody teaching. He got a ruler. Clock him with your ruler. Tell him stop going in the snack bar. Boo, boo, and boo. You know what I'm saying? Look at your son. Your stomach actually rests in between your thighs. How is that possible? What did that nigga say? What in the Syracuse University is going on here? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, that nigga say that nigga's left the pizza spot with 10 pizzas and came home with two. And ate eight pizzas on the way. Come on, man. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Well, I can do both. But you're going to get this work, nigga. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, Eugene. So that's the first thing, right? It said that they said his heart is lifted up. Now, for those who already know, in the gospel, did they say Yahushua's heart was lifted up? It is so wet. Yeah, it said he said his heart is lifted up. Go sit down, please. Now, y'all, y'all invade the space. He said, You have said, I am Allahim. Can we read that Yahushua said he was Allahim? Where can we read it at? And John, when he said, I am my father. Okay. But also in John 8, he said, before Abraham was, he was. And what did people try to do to him? Where have you ever seen Satan say he was God? Never. Not near time. Where's the only place? Where do you read? The only place you see anybody saying they Allahim besides Allahim is the beast when he stand up by the Ruach of, or the spirit of Satan and say he God. That's the only time you see that in the text. You don't see that in the text nowhere where Satan ever said he was God. You can read it in John chapter 8, verse 58, where he say, before Abraham was, I am. Why you think the people sought the stone? They knew what he told them, because y'all know what the law say, I am that I am. Ain't that what it said? So when he told them that, you think the people ain't know what he said? Now you mentioned John 10 and 30, where he said, I am my Abba one. And what it said the people sought to do to him? And he said, stone, he said, but he said, I ain't did nothing but good work. What you stoning me for? Come over here to John 10. I'm already in John, so that's why I say that. John 10 and 30. Look, Dale, look, Dale. Boy, ain't even no tears coming out your eyes, look, Dale. Ain't nothing wrong with you, little Dale. Nothing wrong with you, all that cap and you doing. He said, I am my Abba one. Then the Yahudim took up stones to stone him. Yahushua answered, many good works have I showed you from my Abba. For which of these works do you stone me? The Yahudim answered him, saying, for a good work we stone you not for, for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself Allahim. Is this not exactly what it's equal to an angel? Let me read that to you again. What my I following? Because I want to make sure that you see that. It says, because your heart is lifted up, because you said, I am Allahim, and I sit in the seat of Allahim, in the midst of the seas, yet you are a man and not Allahim, though you set your heart as Allahim. Is that not exactly what he just told you? Did any people just not tell him, you being a man, make yourself Allahim? So Satan is automatically ruled out. Because when it says that he sit in the midst of the seas, 
What does that mean? What does that mean? Sitting in the midst of the sea. No, it means to sit amongst the people. Seas are representative of people. Understand, what was the crime that Yahusha was convicted of? Blasphemy. So they felt like his heart was lifted up because he knew he was the son of Elohim. He said, you say I blaspheme because I, because my Abba has sanctified me and sent me in the world. And you say I blaspheme because I said I'm the son of Elohim. Satan is eliminated. Now, the next thing in verse 3, it said, because you are wiser than Daniel. How does the book describe Daniel? Perfect understanding. And what did Gabriel say to Daniel? This is a man greatly beloved. So you mean to tell me Satan is wiser than a man who's greatly beloved? When can a sinner, when can the wicked have more wisdom than the wise? So Satan is automatically eliminated again. When you actually pay attention to what it actually saying, how is Satan wiser than Daniel? That would mean Satan would have more wisdom than the righteous. Daniel is described as a man without blemish. Verse four: With your wisdom and your understanding, you have gotten riches. You have gotten gold and silver into your treasures. By great wisdom and by traffic, you have increased your riches. Your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, because I, you have set your heart as the heart of Elohim, does not Philippians 2 and 6 tell you to let this mind be in you? The same mind that be in you. Okay. You, my friend, are automatically thought about natural things, and that's your first mistake. See, we already read in Proverbs chapter. No, listen. Because you automatically thought about natural things. That was your first mistake. Because the book tells you in Proverbs 13 and 7, there's a man who has great riches, yet have nothing. And there's a man who maketh himself poor, yet has riches. Because 2 Corinthians chapter 10, excuse me, chapter 8 and verse 9 tell you, who Amashiach made himself poor, that through his poverty, we might be made rich. Because Proverbs chapter 8 tells you that I have durable riches. See, these are the riches that are in heaven. Because you're not understanding that he told you that wisdom is above cheap rubies, gold and silver, and nothing that you can desire can be compared to it. He also told you that though you be poor in this world, you are rich in faith. So by wisdom and understanding, that's how your riches are increased. We're not talking about gold and silver. We're not talking about material things. See, that goes back to what we started off the whole conversation with about not being emotionally attached to anything because it's temporary. See, we talking about things that's all eternal. See, a nigga with a simple mind, that's just, I'm talking about a nigga with a simple mind, meaning somebody who's carnal. They're going to look at that and they're going to automatically think about material things. I can't bust your balls on this. I'm not busting the balls because you only going by what a nigga talks to. That's not your fault. You know what I'm saying? But I'm talking about the average person who carnal. Indeed, praise Allah. That's the thing. That's what they mind going to look at. So let me read that to you again. No, I mean, relax. He said, by your great wisdom, you have increased riches and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. That's why we walk around and tell the people and say, how, who, if, if he said his Lord, then how are you gave the son? And what did Yahoo try to do? Shut him down. Yeah, his heart lifted up. I'm the son of God. How would his heart be lifted up? But I course it to the, in the outside of sinners, I hate this nigga. That's all it was. It's not proud. See, people see that. See, no, it can't be. That's got to be Satan. But Satan proud. Satan a different type of pride. See, because if you a son of Elohim, of course you're going to be lifted up. See, we lift it up, but we don't lift ourselves up. We lift up the son of Elohim because we know that we have no mercy and salvation without it. So as it tells you, he that is seen, that of esteem in the Lord. So that's who we lift. So again, he still get lifted up and rightfully so. Why you think he say when you lift me up, all men will be drawn unto me? Because by his great wisdom, his skill. See, we were talking about that last night with David. Because he said he was a man who was prudent in all matters and behaved himself wisely. Yahusha behave. See, we don't understand what great wisdom is. Y'all know what wisdom is. It's skill. Yahusha knew what to do, when to do it, what to say, and when to say it. He knew when to be quiet. He knew when to be merciful. He knew when to rebuke. He knew when to forgive. Period point blank. 
That's why he said his great wisdom is not Yahushua shall be made unto us wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification. Praise the Lamb. But let's continue. We're in verse 6. He said, therefore, thus to if Yahuwah Elohim, because you set your heart as the heart of Elohim, behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon you, the terrible of the nations. They shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom, and they shall defile your brightness. Now, when did strangers defile Satan? What did, who did Yahusha say was going to kill it? Not his own people, but who actually killed him? Because he told him in John 8, 16, come on, Ryan. See this for him, because he owns it. It's not your fault. I did told you. That's why I don't want to talk to none of the niggas you know. That's why I be telling you that niggas dumb. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to talk to niggas who dumb on purpose. You know what I'm saying? You were dumb by accident. When I say that, I'm talking about in everybody in every organization you were part of. Y'all were dumb by accident. Dumb meaning you can't speak, you don't know. I'm talking about, as they say in Isaiah, they dumb dogs who can't bark. So that meaning you can't speak because you don't know. You know what I'm saying? And you don't know because he never been preached to you. So that's not your fault. But the men who taught you, they dumb on purpose. Believe that. They dumb on purpose. So I don't want you to think I'm just busting your balls. I'm just being that honest with you. You know what I'm saying? And you know I would do that if nobody said it, but I have told you that before. But the part with your friends, that's no disrespect to them as men, but I don't want to talk to them. Because they don't know what they're talking about. Case in point, when you say that dude threw that battery in your back, he didn't actually take the time to give you wisdom so you would know how to conduct yourself. He gave you the ability to destroy a relationship. And when I say relationship, then it's got to be that specific relationship. That's all he gave you the ability to do is destroy, not to nurture, not to build, not to repair, not to reconcile, not to grow, not to love, not to understand, but to destroy. I don't want to talk to people like that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's not been, he didn't benefit you. He did you more harm than he could ever do you good. Because all he was going to bring in your life was misery, confusion, out, and loneliness. And you don't want to fool with people like that. You don't want to fool with people like that. At all. John 18 and 28. Yeah, I just don't be going in depth, depth when I tell you, like, I don't want to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Because if I would have been on the phone when you were talking to that dude, I would have hung the phone up. And I would have told you, boy, that nigga's stupid, boy. You better stop talking to him. Straight up. What type of person get on there and just go throwing out random scripts? I've been told you about that there. When you talking to somebody, they just throwing out random scripts. Nine times out of ten, they don't know what they're talking about. Because when somebody talking to you, giving you godly counsel, the script come out in their conversation. They ain't got to tell you, pull Ecclesiastes 15 and 3. That's a cornball nigga, man. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. That's a that's a that's what I was telling you the other day. That's a precept recital. Huh? You ain't, ain't right, ain't, ain't, ain't IUIC got the precept book, send the boys out with. You don't want to talk to a precept recital. That's somebody who don't know no word. You don't want to talk to no precept recital. Anybody can open up and recite a precept. Only a few got the wisdom and understanding how to heal and instruct the heart. That's totally different. John 18, 28. Then they led Yahushua from Caphas unto the hall of judgment. It was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, that they might eat the Passover. Pilate went out unto them and said, What accusation bring you against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor... We would have not delivered him up unto you. Paul, who got delivered up to Gentiles? Samson. Took him right up there and brought him to him. And matter of fact, he said, don't fall on me yourself. He said, no, we ain't going to kill you, bro. We're going to take you to the Philistines. They're going to do Then Pilate said unto him, take you him and judge him according to your law. The Yahudim therefore said unto him, it is not lawful for us to put any man to death. That the saying of Yahushua might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying with death he should die. What did he tell you? Come over here to Matthew 20 and 19. We read it last night. Look what he told. You. That's what he said. 20 and 19. 20 and 17. Yahushua going up to Jerusalem took the 12 disciples apart in the way and said unto him, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, the Son of Man shall be betrayed. Unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock, 
to scourge, to crucify, and the third day he shall rise again. So when you see talking about he's going to take this man and give him to strangers, and they will destroy, draw swords against the beauty of his wisdom and defile his brightness, that's the Lord. That's not Satan. This is the, this is the killing of Yahusha. It's his suffering. Ain't got nothing to do with the king. And guess what? Y'all know it's many verses in Ezekiel that's talking about kings of other races. And it's really talking about Yahusha. We can go in chapter 31, chapter 30, 27. It's a whole cavalcade of them. But let's keep going in Ezekiel 28 and 8. And look what it say right behind that after they said they'll defile his brightness. You shall be, they shall bring you down to the pit. And you shall die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. And he said he made his grave with the wicked. So guess what it said? We going to kill you. That's not Satan. Satan ain't got no testimony of going to no grave. Let's keep on going. Will you say before them that slay you, I am Elohim? When you shall be a man and know Elohim in the hand of them that slay you. And what did they say? If you be the son of God, come down off the stake. Ain't that what they said to him? And what did the Lord say? Not a word. Not a word. This ain't the devil. Don't let these people lie to you, man. He said, you shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. For I, Yahuwah, have spoken it, saith Yahuwah, Allahim. And who killed Yahusha? You just read it. It was Gentiles. It was strangers. It was strangers. Let's keep on going. Moreover, the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. And say unto him, Thus if you while he who seal up the sum, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. Well, let's look at seal up the sum. Now the sum is uh talk now. This is the fullness of that which fills. So when he sealed up the sum, of course, right? If he full with wisdom, right, and perfect in beauty, perfect kill is Kayil, which is entirety. A Khalil, excuse me. Kav, two Lamads, and a, and a Yah. Oh, oh, guess what? Or a whole burnt offering. That's what that word means. So when you see that, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, you feel, you full of wisdom, a burnt offering in beauty. A whole burnt offering in beauty. That's what it says. Hold on. And beauty here is your faith. Which of course is beauty. Now this is the key thing. Isaiah chapter 11. What did it say that that stem of Jesse would be filled with? Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, quick in the fear of Yahuwah. This ain't Satan. When you read Satan full of wisdom and perfect in beauty, much less being a whole burnt offering. Black. The doctrines of idiots. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day. Now, let's get it even further. You have been in Eden. See, this way they get God at. You've been in Eden. The garden of Elohim. No, not just you. Not just you. But guess who else was in Eden? Yahusha was in Eden too. What is the? How did he describe Eden in Revelation? It's the paradise of Elohim. So why would Yah? Just because why would Yahusha not be there? But Yahusha is not the one that when you see the manifestation of them talking to Yahuwah, they were dealing with a Malachi. They weren't dealing with him. Because if we say that Yahusha was in the garden of Eden dealing with Adam, then you're saying he was on the earth twice. <laughs> Bro, Elohim may step foot on this earth, man, until the manifestation of him in the flesh. <laughs> them be Malachi people be dealing with, and they hear the voice of Elohim. But they're not dealing with Elohim. They're still dealing with Malachim. A man can't look Elohim in the face and live. That's what we're missing. Ain't that what the law say? He said, any man that look me in the face will die. As if he was a and in Exodus 33, what did it, Yahuwah the one told Moses, I'll show you my back parts. I can't let you see my face. When he dealing with him face to face, he dealt with him directly. Moses didn't have to go through anybody to get to Yahuwah. He dealt with him directly. No, nah, he said, I can't. This is in Exodus 33. He said, I can't let you see my face. Any man see my face 
you're going to die. You know why? Because a nigga going to go make an image of this man's face and he's going to bow down and worship and he told you not to do it. Told you not to do it. Adam never saw the face of Elohim. No one has ever seen the face of Elohim that was born of a woman. Period. It ain't happened. Besides him. But he's seen that face before he came. So he can look at it and live. Say no man has ever seen his shape, nor his form, nor heard his voice at any time. So who is that that you heard? That's who you heard the whole time. Are you saying you don't see him? You don't see him? And why? Because what king do you know get off his throne to do menial labor? That's why I'm a king. That's what I got servants for. So we just said that her name was on the throne. That's what I'm not a king. That was a Malachi they heard. That was a Malachi they, bro, it tell you that you got the law, a dispensation of angels. That's what it tell you to ask. You've never dealt with what they saw. They seen a vision of Allah, but they didn't see him. Because he's as this brother Jen is asking about who did Isaiah see? The same thing that just like what Ezekiel see. You seen a vision of Allah, but you did not see him. No man has ever laid because if any man laid his eyes on Allah, then Yahuwah is a liar because he said you would die if you saw his face. That's it. They were seeing the vision of Mashiach the whole time, a similar to. But nobody has ever dealt. I've been telling people this for years. Kings don't get all they do. For what? Do you know why we don't see it and think it that way? Because you don't think like a king. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you don't think like a root. You know what I'm saying? Like us? Straight up. People mimic, mock what, up, People mock what they see and they come into America. That's what kings do. That's what I got. That's why he say the angels are ministers of fire. You know what I'm saying? They're messengers. They serve it. That's what I got you for. That's why in Matthew, he said, I'm a man under authority. When you say go, then go. You who will say go, you go. That's a whole nother thing. But you will not see the father until it is over. That's it. Well, if you don't make it to New Jerusalem, you will never, ever lay eyes on Allah. Ever. Because when you see Yahusha, you see who at the end of the day. But you ain't seen Elohim. You ain't never laid your eyes on him. You don't even know what, you don't have no idea what his form looked like. That's why you, that's why Yahusha didn't say Yahuwah is a Ruach. He said Elohim. Because when you talk, that's why he said, Me and my one. you seen Yahuwah, you seen me. We, we wanted the same. That's it. Period, point blank. You know what I'm talking about? But Elohim, his father, you ain't seen him. You don't know nothing about him. You know nothing about him. And even still with Yahusha, like he said, you heard the voice of Yahusha, you ain't see his physics, you ain't see his body, because that's Malachi dealing with you. You How you gonna lay your eyes on something that pure? He said his eyes are too pure to look upon evil. Nigga, he can't look at you. He look at you, you got to die. Why you think when Samson them seen that, that Malachi, Samson parent, what's the first thing they said? Oh, we gonna die. We done seen, they thought they seen Elohim, they ain't seen nothing but an angel. In itself, you ain't seen nothing but an angel. Why well, nobody lay eyes on that man? Just, I'm just being honest with you. If you see, this is my point on when you know the script, then you can see the foolishness and things that people be talking about. Because I know that ain't nowhere in the world Satan walk around here perfect in beauty. Now listen to what it said, right? Every precious stone was your covering. The sarges, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. These are the things that are described on the temple. These are things that are described on the gates. Some of these are the precious stones of the high priest's garment. Ain't no no dog gonna say the blasphemy, the lies, the foolishness. Oh, I'm in the wrong shop. I done skipped over my now it says, the workmen of your tabernacles and of your pipes were prepared in the day that you were created. You ought to listen. Be quiet, Grandma. 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 Be quiet. Be quiet. Nothing wrong with you. 
Number one, I want you to look at tabarets. That's tote. That's a timbrel. That's a tambourine. When we look at pipes, that's nakab. That's a technical term relating to a jeweler's work. A groove, a socket, a hole, a cavity. So when he tell you that the pipes, this ain't talking about singing. That's talking about jewelry or open wound. So if you sit back looking at gems or holes, then you talking about them holes in his hands and in his feet and in his side. Ain't got nothing to do with Satan. I don't know where these people got Satan was the minister over music. That ain't nothing but nigga talk. That ain't nothing but nigga talk. Ain't got no book for that. That's nigga talk. I can't even say that nigga talk. That is just old wives' tales. That's just been passed down and people repeated it. How many of y'all have never said Satan was the minister of music? I know you said you said. Huh? I'd have heard plenty of niggas say that. So when you look at right, and the word for created is bara, which is shape or form. To shape and fashion, create always with Allahim as subject. Also to cut down or to cut out. So when it tell you that the pipes or the hole was there when he was created, it's the lamb slain for the foundation of the world. Verse 14, you are the anointed cherub that covered. As I said you so, you was upon the Kadash mountain of Elohim. You walk up and down in the midst of the stones of the fire. See, and this is why we went to Ezekiel chapter 10, and this is why we went to Isaiah chapter 6. You just see the coals of the fire in the midst, in the midst of the throne. So where's Satan at in the throne? Now you see the key components why we went to Isaiah, Isaiah 6. Ezekiel 10, you put them together, Satan is automatically eliminated. Because who was the only one in the midst of the throne? The two covering chairs. So where Satan at in the midst of that? And he said he anointed chairs. Well, we already know what anointed is, right? So we're going to open our mouth and blaspheme and say Satan is anointed. He said this is the anointed chair. See, you know, most of them brews don't like to deal with that, right? Now look at this here, right? The word here is memshah. Which is outspread, outstretched wings, also anointed. You got two means, a shan and a kai. So you mean to tell me that somebody has been separated because they got paired by the blood of the Ruach, or you know what I'm saying, or the blood of Mashiach? No, this ain't got nothing to do with no Satan. This, ain't, this is an anointed chair. The cherubs cover the throne of Allah. See, let me tell you something, right? See, come over here to Psalms 99 real quick. I'm just going to grab you a couple places you can get out. Well, Psalm, I think Isaiah 37 say the same thing that Psalm 99 say. Because we have to make ascertain that Satan is no chair, never was no chair, never will be no chair. That's why we took the time to read that in Ezekiel chapter 10. And we talked about chairs a few weeks ago. This is why I take, see, now, of course, you want to talk this here. This is why it takes the time to study the text to understand who your Elohim is, how he operates, not study just to know stuff, not study just to debate, but to understand. See, like this here, right? And I'm just using this as an example. And praise be to Elohim in the name of Yahoo Child 4. Look at the understanding you just got. You've seen in Ezekiel 10 that he saw an image of what? In Ezekiel 10, it was the image of what? The house, right? And you see that he told him to get coals of fire from under, the, in between the chairs, who were under the throne because it said that the, 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 the throne was above the chair. Get the coals from there. We swing to Isaiah chapter 6. We see that Isaiah is having a vision of what? The temple again. The same temple that we were reading about in Ezekiel 41 where it's talking about the same thing in the midst. And he said, I pulled the, the chair came with coals. Well, the chair covers the throne. So where would he have got the coals from? From under the throne. So now when you come back to Ezekiel 28 and you see him talking about you were with me in the midst of the thrones of fire, and we already know this is not Satan. Because at that point, we are actually saying that Satan is living in the inner sanctum of the living Elohim. And that is just downright cool. Because where is the throne at in the house of Elohim? According to the law, where is it at there? You no, know I'm talking about in the house, inside the temple, where is the throne? You know, the Ark of the Covenant was in a specific but inside the holy of the holy, the Kadash of the Kadash. So you mean to tell me that the adversary, that the devil, 
and the deceiver that the serpent was dwelling in the holy of holies, the set apart of set apart, when that makes no sense. And on top of that, that's violation of law. Because who the only person who could go in the holy of holies? So guess who that was? He talking about an anointed chair that was in that high place in that mouth. That was Yahoo Chah. They ain't had nothing. That wasn't no saying. Don't let these people make no fool out of you, man. These people be lying, man. Look at Psalms 99. Look what it say. Verse 1. You who are reigned, let the people tremble. He sit between the cherubim. Let the earth be moved. Let the earth be moved. Satan can't be no cherubim. You know how Satan can't be no cherubim? How did it describe the cherubim? We just read it. How did it describe it? How did Ezekiel describe it? They have four faces. What were those four faces? Lion, eagle, man, chair. Satan is eliminated. It said he had wings, right? Satan is eliminated. But you don't read about Satan having four faces, and you don't read about Satan having no wings. Matter of fact, and we talk about this many a day. Satan ain't talked about in his book, man. He is a big player. He is not important. He is rarely mentioned in the Old Testament. The most shine he got in the Old Testament is in the book of Job. And that's in the first two chapters, and that's it. Where else he was at? I can't say I can't say in the book of Numbers because Satan means adversary. So that wasn't Satan. And uh, I'm talking about script, son. Script. You got David. And, and that's about it. You got Joe and him and him tempting David, and, and that's it. Now that's it. That's it. That's it, Zechariah. That's it. That's it. He's not talked about. He's not a. He don't even get that much shine in the gospel. The only time he talked about in the gospel is being is in, in Yahweh's temptation. Well, didn't he not say he Judas? But I mean, again, he don't got that much shine. He's not talked about. All Satan means is adversary. So he's the opposite of what is right. That's right, Zechariah chapter three, by verse four. Satan is a bit player, but he's not important because when you go against righteousness, you are Satan. You're an adversary. That's why he told Peter, get behind me, Satan. He wasn't calling him the devil. He was calling him an adversary. Because you were trying to tell me not to go do what my father told me to do. Because you didn't have understanding. Satan is a title. That's why he say the call Hashatan. You got Satan and then you got Hashatan, the adversary, who's also called the devil or the serpent. He is the adversary. That's it. Satan is not that important. Satan is akin to how people, black people talk about white people in America. You're giving way too much credit. He is not that powerful. He's not that smooth. And he's not that important. Does he seek to, to, to devour people? Absolutely. He seeks to devour those who, look at who he said the devil snatched up out of their heart. Those that's by the wayside. Those who don't know no better. That's the only ones he can get. Because the other ones were caught up because they lacked faith and because they were covenant. You know what I'm talking about? Satan ain't had nothing to do with that. That's your own heart. Like when we were reading by that evil spirit last night, who said that evil spirit do to you? By definition, that Hebrew word. Same difference. Torment, terror, cause dismay. That's all he can do. Make your life hard. He can't do nothing else. Satan ain't never made nobody in the history of life see. Ever. He ain't made nobody sin. That book tell you if a man sinned, he sinned because that what was in his heart. According to his own lust. Satan ain't got nothing to do with it. See, that's a that's a that's a nigga cop out. When I say nigga, I mean a low, low level, low grade, rotten, just, just despicable, detestable individual. I'm talking about a nigga who lack complete total accountability and want to pass the buck off to somebody else. I got this lust demon on me. Satan busy today. No, nigga, you busy. <laughs> you busy. Straight up. Satan in heaven. All Satan can do is tempt you. 
And then when you go for it, he gonna throw his hands up and say, nigga, I ain't making you do it. I just put it out there. That's a whole nigga to the higher degree. Like I've been telling y'all for years, you got a choice. Nigga be like, what if a nigga put a gun in your head? Nigga, you can die. The difference is, is you don't want to deal with you got to die. You coward, you. But you so tough and hard. We ain't got no choice. We got to go. We got to wear them. You ain't got to wear a mask. You can lose your job. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we got to work on the Sabbath. No, you can lose your job. You got a choice. You just don't want to make the tough decision and be uncomfortable. See, that's what it comes down to. That choice you got to make is a difficult choice, a choice you don't want to make. So you try to make it seem like you ain't got no choice to cover up the fact that this is what you want to do. Or you don't have the wherewithal, the intestinal and testicular fortitude to make a tough decision and live with the outcome. You know what I'm saying? Yahoo Shah told you don't fear a man who can kill the body. And after that, he ain't got nothing to do. He around here fearing men. So why wouldn't they walk up and down the street talking about no justice, no peace? Black lives matter. Nigga, righteous lives matter. A sinner life don't matter nowhere in heaven. In the earth or under the earth. Ask you who will see what he takes. And they law ain't touched. But come on, man. At the end of the day, you shouldn't dare be walking around talking about Black Lives Matter. Nigga, that's a corporate designation. You should say the saints' lives matter. Because what you going to do when they persecute the saints? The same niggas you walk around protesting for going to be singing and cheering at your death. Because you stood up for righteousness. They ain't going to say Black Lives Matter. They didn't kill that Jesus keeper. That's what they going to say. And they ain't going to call him by his name. They going to keep on saying, gee, that Jesus keeper. I hate them Hebrew niggas. Kill them. They telling me I'm wrong. They telling me that man ain't God. I seen him resurrect from the dead. They going to be screaming Black Lives Matter. They ain't going to be the first ones to kill you dead. Don't you fall for it. Don't you fall for it. The saints' lives matter. That's what the first thing ought to be in your head. Ain't that what the words say? That's who lives matter. And ain't no and ain't now say been killed by the hands of the police. I done told you that's center problem. I don't care who don't like it. Take that up with the Lord, you don't like it. Nigga around here, nigga had a nerve to say an innocent black man got killed by the police. Innocent to whom? In the eyes of whom? Maybe he was innocent in the eyes of man, but was he innocent in the eye of Yahuwah? I would wager not. You know how I can wager not? Because before he offered us an opportunity at repentance, we were not innocent in his eyesight. So I know they ain't innocent. A porn star. And I seen it too. I told you that he was a porn star. The photographs of the nigga in the porn nigga said, Well, we know you like porn. That nigga, that nigga be beating at me, rubbing his neck back. You know what I'm talking about? Put a little extra crystal back there. That boy be good to go. <laughs> no, somebody on Facebook posted like this nigga was in porn. I could believe it. Then he probably then they sacrificed him to Apollo. Because look when he died, what, May 25th? Yeah. Seven days, six, seven days later, eight days later, you got the blackout for George Floyd for the birth of Apollo. Come on, man. These people be playing with us, man. I already told you. Look how they insulted you. They had Big Bird talking to you about racism. Elmo. Boy, that's how they see you. Like a three-year-old. They had to sing sing-along songs for you, my nigga. Don't kill the niggers. I mean, the black niggers. Listen to what it said, right? You were, this is verse 15 in Ezekiel 28. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you was created till iniquity was found in you. Was he not slain from the foundation of the world? So the iniquity that was found in him is not his iniquity, but the iniquity of man. How can somebody who's tamayin, who's perfect, who's innocent, who's sound, have iniquity in him? That's injustice. That's unrighteousness. Wrong. It was wrong found in man, not in Yahoo shop. He said, by the multitudes of your merchandise, they have filled the midst of you with violence. You have sinned. Therefore, I will cast you as profane out of the mountain of Elohim. I will destroy you, O covering terror, from the midst of the stones of the fire. What did we see the stones of the fire again in the house of Elohim, right? But then it said on the Kadash mountain of Elohim, which is what? The government or the rule. That ain't Satan, man. That ain't Satan, man. Satan had to ask for uh for permission to approach the you who in the book of Job. Yeah. Come on now. Now when he said he'll cast you out as profane, 
Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, how you cast down to the earth. Notice that he said you have your merchandise, which is Rakala, which is your traffic, your trade. What is his merchandise? He traffics and trade in the word of Allah. He, that fills you in the midst of you with violence. Violence is Kamaz. That's wrong, injustice, and cruelty. So when by the trade of Satan was he filled with violence? Because it's not saying filled with violence like he's going to do violence, but violence was done to you. Again, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So then he said, I'll cast you out as profane. Profane is kalal, which is to dilute, to pollute, to desecrate, or to make common. Also to bore through and to wound and to pierce. So he cast him out as a man because he said that he was born of a woman and he was born of a woman to be pierced. But well, let's continue. Verse 17 says, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You have corrupted your wisdom by reason of brightness. I will cast you to the ground. I will lay you before kings that they may behold you. Now, where is Satan laid before kings that they might see him? But let me ask you this here. What kings were present when Yahushua got killed? Michael, do you know what kings were present when Yahushua Do you know? I see you. I see you. What kings were present when Yahushua got killed? You know? No, there was, there was, two, there was a king present. Everett? He just told us. Herod was there. You could probably wasn't no king. He was a governor. He was there. They were there. They seen it. They seen it. That's not safe. All this is referring to is the iniquity that Yahusha came to remove from us. And that, because he said, oh, covering cherub. What do covers, cherubs cover that covenant? Yeah. No, he was a governor, but he wasn't. So, so what you saying? Like he's covering our sins. That's what, That's what he said. Oh, covering cherub. A, care, a cherub covered a covenant. He said, oh, anointed covering cherub. What did those, what, what, what was the cherub being set to do at the tree of life, right? To cover it, to guard it. There's no need for covering cherubs in the, over the Ark of the Covenant anymore because Yahushua has been manifested and the gospel has been revealed and salvation is open to all men. Has absolutely nothing to do with Satan at all. That's just a bridge version because we dealt with this in the past. I have no idea what video it is. So, but hallelujah for Yahoo Show. We got to stop now. We're running about two hours and 40 minutes. Uh, I appreciate everybody's time. And we'll probably reference back because we still got some more stuff to look at, Cherubim, in regards to oh. being specific. But, uh, and I will go back because we was at the end and that's why I didn't grab every single solitary precept. But I will grab you some precepts to line up with that. So you can see it for yourself versus the reference in Ezekiel 28. But prayerfully, most of y'all got the gist of that. But the key point that I wanted you to understand of the difference was slow, man, is that stones of fire is in the in the house of Allahim. And you see two other witnesses bearing witness to that. So when you see that Ezekiel 28, and again, this is understanding the height. Because when you understand the height, you understand the elevation into the house to dwell with Allahim. But we still got more to go. It's a lot. We're going to take our time with it. Again, I bless y'all at the house of Yahuwah in the name of Yahuwah. I appreciate y'all. love y'all. Continue to stand firm in the faith of Yahuwah willing. Until the next time. You want to steal all that? I'm being serious. You see the, you see the difference?